Welcome to the Elliot Hulse Podcast. Podcast. I am the king of making men strong. Shedding of the old man, right? The way we can freely walk into rising, ascending, cleansing, sanctifying our soul for it's the Yo Elliot God. Show. I like that. Yo, bros, we're back with a new show, and I got two of my bros here, you might say. Some people yeah. think so. Anyway, <laughs> they call them the host twins, <laughs> and I'm Elliot Hodge. <laughs> right. They, all th- they, they think we're related, you know? Yeah. Yep. I don't know how many times people came up to us, hey, it's the host twins. I'm like, what? <laughs> Are you offended when you hear that? Like, no, no, no motherfuckers. I know, I know exactly who they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so, but, and uh, that used to fill my comments. Man, they, they look just like Elliot Host, and then you go to your comments. Man, he looks just like the Hodge twins. Yeah, you know? so I so. imagine I was like, because we used to get, we'd go in the grocery store. Hey, man, it's the Host twins. I'm like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my reaction. Yeah. Like, so no, I was like, I know Elliot's got to be getting this shit too yeah, all the yeah. time. Yeah, and sometimes I yeah. play it off. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, that's right. No, my brother's at home right. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. You know what it is though? A lot of people are nervous when they first see you, so yeah. they. A lot of people do stupid things when they first meet somebody, especially somebody a big fan of. So people make mistakes all the time. So that's got a lot to do with it, too. Yeah. That and we look like uh, triplets. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, one thing I noticed when I became, quote unquote, famous mm-hmm. was that those days of uh, s- signatures. Remember back in the day, if you meet a f- famous person, you would take a signature? Right, mm-hmm. right. Hey, sign my this or that. Mm-hmm. But now yeah. it's just pictures everywhere just you go. Pic- right, yeah, right. Taking pictures with people. Yeah. Yeah. You guys revealed something last night during a show that I thought was fascinating too. We have a lot of parallels. Mm-hmm. One of which is that your ancestors are Scottish. Yeah. yeah. Irish, Scotland, European, yeah. Wales. Yeah, when I got my DNA check, um, what was it, Ancestry? It was yeah, like we're 44% Africa. European, Scotland and Irish. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you, oh man, I forget the name of the word, but my grandma, my great aunt was at my house this uh, summer mm-hmm. and she revealed to me the, plaid pattern that's mm. associated with the with the uh Scottish tribe. Oh, okay. That we're in. Mm. You got, oh, you you got Scottish too, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it makes that's sense what I'm saying. We look alike, yeah. you know. Scottish yeah. Scottish people are pretty tough. They're tough yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're a man you're wearing a skirt, you got to be tough. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. wore skirts and stuff. Yeah. yeah. We, we we went to Ireland and uh we saw one of those shows out in the streets we was in Scotland. Yeah, playing with the bagpipes. first time the they had the yeah. bagpipes and stuff. Cool. All of them had big powerful muscular. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> big big dudes, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Vikings. Birds? Yeah. Like yeah. Vikings, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of, have you guys ever seen the documentary uh, Stones of Strength? No. So it's a, you know it's, it goes around in the fitness industry. It's one of these where the, these guys went through uh, Europe and they discovered these different cultures that initiated men through the lifting of stones. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it was in Scotland. Mm-hmm. And so these guys, like, they recognize their masculinity and their value as men mm-hmm. by, can you pick up this stone, boy? Yeah, right. Pick up this stone, bigger yeah. stone, yeah, bigger right. and bigger stone. So they're definitely... Right. Definitely it's probably why you see it in all the strongman contests and picking up the big boulders and stuff. Yeah, big. Uh, Have yeah. you heard of the Highland Games? Mm-mm. Hi, it's a so you wear a skirt. Okay. Wear a kilt. Yeah. And, it's a kilt, uh, not a skirt, right? Yeah, it's right. Not a skirt is kilt. I know. Yeah. I have to acknowledge my own history. Right? <laughs> Who the hell knows? I don't know my right. history. Yeah. I don't think most of us know our history. It's, yeah. it's right. fun finding out though. Yeah. But there's a, a tradition of li- of strength competitions mm. with the Scottish, mm. and they will do things like take a long pole, they call it a caber. Mm-hmm. I don't know, 20 feet or whatever, and you hold it like this, mm-hmm. and then you throw it, and it tosses end over end. Have you guys seen that? Mm-mm. No, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Throwing probably big because, rocks. Probably because I got a bad back. <laughs> I stay away from stuff like that, but no. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Scotland. I mean, uh, when we was there, what, what part was we at? We went to... Um, it was the capital, I forget it. Yeah, I can't even remember, capitals. but was that we was actually doing some shows out there. And in Scotland, you know what I found? The people there, their accents are so thick. Yeah. Oh man. They be talking English, but they're so thick, it sounds like they're talking a whole another language. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's, so your grandfather spoke like that. Uh, he was my what was it? Great 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 grandfather. He was from Ireland. Yeah. His name is Donald Cheatham. <laughs> was it Don, <laughs> what was it? it? Was Don Donald Cheatham? Yeah, Donald Cheatham. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
His name was Don. They actually wrote a, uh, a book about our family called the Hurstons. We come from the biggest plantation from Slave Virginia, plantation. And, and he's in the book. And yeah. uh, he was from Ireland. And um, He had a white family and a black family. Yeah. Hey. That's all right. And yeah. dude had him, had him two chicks. Had him but, a black but chick and a white really? chick. Yes. But what's crazy about him back in those days, you know, the whites who had black kids, they never associated themselves with their kids. Uh, in, in that book, in town, he's out in town spending time with his black boys, drinking with them. And yeah. He was different. Yeah. He was totally different, yeah. He was there for them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> My great-grandfather, he was English. Because mm -hmm. just like you guys, I did the test too. My mm -hmm. brother did the test mm -hmm. and gave me back the results. He was English. His name was John Hulse. And he came to Belize mm -hmm. and he liked the black puss. Yeah. Right. Like you guys were saying. Right. Yeah. He had a, he, I don't remember, I don't know her name, <laughs> but she was a tall African woman mm -hmm. uh, uh, that he hooked up with. Mm -hmm. But he was uh, like a, he was a G. They say he would ride his horse everywhere he goes, mm -hmm. bareback. And he would walk, he would go into the store, oh yeah, with his with his horse, just a big arrogant man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? And then so what's the what's the African half? Do you know? Uh, twenty four percent was like Nigerian. Yeah. Um, I forget the other. Uh, but it came Tobago, out Tobago. Um, yeah. Like islands. Ghana. Um, yeah. Ghana. Um, mm -hmm. But fifty four percent of our ancestors from Africa. Yeah. Yeah. The other forty four percent was um European and Scotland and we had some some other We area. had Wales. We then had like one percent mm -hmm. hunter gatherer. <laughs> what is that? Is I like, don't know what the hell that is. Okay, I'm Native American or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um yeah. Well it's not it's the Balkans. We came up with Balkans. The Balkan Islands. Uh, no, it's like the Balkans. It's like Finland, Sweden. Yeah, oh yeah. That's we right, had a little yeah. bit of that too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys are more mixed up than me. Yeah? Yeah. So I had 40% it was um, Ghana, from Ghana. Yeah, but right. go look at pictures of Ghana. What they look like? Yeah. Short, yep. thick people? No, nah, green, light. Really? Yeah, but there's some. Yeah. There's a lot of them, lot, you will see a, a broad mix of, of like, you know, uh, people's colors. You see people like you, then you see somebody very, very dark, you know? Yeah. But you it's probably, a lot of people You look, probably look that way because he's got Scottish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm those, thinking that's the people in Ghana. That's what happened to them too, mm -hmm. unless there was a mutation or some shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. it's probably yeah. from the sky. Race so. mixing. Yeah. yeah. What do you but, think about race mixing? You guys I, have I, Mexican I, wives. I, I like race mixing. I if like it wasn't all, for man. race mixing, I wouldn't be here. So right. yeah, I love I'm it. happy as hell about race mixing. You wouldn't be so good looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just be I'd a plain old African. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a plain old African. That's yeah. racist shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, I got. Yeah, man. Yeah, um, I, I'm. I'm happy about my um, my ancestry. You know, my from Ireland and you yeah, know. I'm European. glad I'm mixed. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not just one thing because when you're more or less when you're one thing, you see life as one thing. Right. I'm yeah. glad I'm totally mixed now. I'm able to be objective when I look at race. Yeah, because we look at it from right straight down from the middle, black, white. You know, yeah. because that's that's my genetic makeup. I'm not just solely African-American. So I, that that could be a detriment to anybody because especially in the black community, they only see things from a black man. They don't see things from the world. Yeah. You know, they put themselves in a box and that hurts a lot of blacks. Yeah. Fortunately, you know, I have ancestry, you know, growing up, I wasn't, people have always seen us as not as like black. Shit, people think we Mexican when they look at us a Puerto Rican. They oh, yeah. see a black man, yeah. and I'm sure you went through the exact same thing growing yeah, up. So yeah, yeah. speaking so, Spanish to me, blah 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 blah. Mm, blah, blah. Yeah, like, people yeah. talking Spanish to you. So yeah. I think that you know that's a privilege that I have that that both of us have that you know I'm not just black. I'm I'm more than just a black African. I'm we Irish. see lives. We mm -hmm. see life as just human, the yeah. way you should see it. Not right. as black as white. Yeah, as mixed. We see it more as a human. We see everybody for what they are. Yeah, you know, I don't look at things from a black perspective. I look at from yeah. a human perspective. I used right. to hate when people say I was an urban comedian or a black comedian. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm so like I'm not just a black person. I'm just I'm I'm a comedian. I'm not just a black comedian. Yeah. Why Why people like to put it themselves in a box like that? I don't yeah. Know. Where's right. the white? Hey, I'm a white comedian. <laughs> Has right. Seinfeld ever labeled himself as a white comedian? Yeah. I mean, right. only the black population do that. Yeah. I remember when I was just getting started on YouTube and my channel was starting to blow up. They mm -hmm. wanted me to do 
uh, YouTube black celebrity something. They got us too, yeah. 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 And, I, yeah. Re- I, and resisted that was, it. I went to it. We went to it twice, dude. We went to it twice. And the second time I was like, you know what? This is some bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's good. I'm happy that we're all happy to be black and this and that. But this is so lame. This is This is no different from what. The white people used to do in the white supremacy. White people, let's think white. That's all they talk is black. I was like, this is so not me. Right. Obsessed with it. Yeah. And then when we came out as conservative, they don't invite us anymore. I wasn't going back anyway because it was the lamest shit ever to us. It was like, this is so lame. And But they, when we came out as conservatives, they stopped inviting us. I wouldn't have went anyway, to be honest with you. Yeah. It was just the lamest shit. That's all we talked about is being black. You're surrounded by black people. We're happy to be black. I'm, I you don't need I, this to be happy. You know what I found odd? When we went, it was more black queers than, than black creators. You had uh, yeah. um, transgenders. The majority right. was transgender. I didn't even heard of them. They have like 2,500 followers. I was like, I mean, I just it's just odd. Yeah, People celebrating just being black. I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm proud to, of my ancestry, but come on, I'm just a human being. Right. Yeah. You American. Know, yeah. yeah. I'm American. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing. I don't see why people call themselves African American. I've never even been to Africa. <laughs> right. And why would I have an allegiance to a country that sold my ancestors to white people? Right. Yeah. It's the stupidest shit ever. Yeah. I tell black people that, oh man, you a sellout. <laughs> I'm like, do you know who gave you that name, uh, African American? It was Democrat politicians right. yeah. to label you, to label you, so you yeah. s- think, see life a certain way, vote a certain way. That yeah. was the whole point in that. Yeah, if right. anybody's a sellout, it would be Africans, uh, African Americans, because they already sold you once. You just <laughs> right. gonna keep going back to them, so they yeah. can sell you over and over and over again. And another thing I don't stand about fucking black people, man. You know, is anybody should be re- uh, conservative, Republican. Anybody should be far right, knowing this country's history, right. should be black people. Yeah. But I don't get it. Black people are pro-government. They keep voting Democrat. They hate the police, but they keep voting for Democrat. But they, they hate police, but they hate the Second Amendment. It's like I, I don't like necessarily like the police, but I respect what they do. I mean, they have a hard job. And a lot of black people nowadays, they, they want the government to take care of them. I don't want the government nowhere near my family. When I need help, I don't call the cops. I go to my damn dress and I pull my gun out. Right. Black people, all black people should have that mentality. They should be far right Republicans. Yeah. I don't get why these these people run to the polls every year at a ninety percent clip and vote for the people who enslaved them, who who uh, put Jim Crow on them, have, who had the KKK at the house, but they just don't understand their history. Yeah. You know? How do you think that happened? Well, it uh, didn't happen by accident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it um, by accident. I mean, there's like no other race of people that's been uh, marginalized as much as black people. I mean, Jewish people, uh, I would say a close second, or they tied, whatever. But when you turn on the TV, when it's coming from, uh, whether you hear a politician, your music, your culture, your TV shows, your church, they all preach, we're Democrats. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's no different from us. When we you ain't black? On. Yeah, for black people, yeah. It's in everything, our music, everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a reason why Snoop Dogg and D.L. Hughley and famous black actors are posting on their Instagram that we're coons. Yeah. There's a reason for that, because they can't have black people thinking like we think. That's why yeah. they posted us. And they got shows. They got podcasts. They own TV. They have a brand. But it's not really their brand. It's the brand that white liberals give them. Yeah. I have my own brand. I don't answer to anybody. Yeah, I don't answer to Democrats yeah. or If anybody's a sellout, it would be black celebrities, because you're selling them out to the people that have, you know, historically just put pe- black people down. Republicans were the party against slavery, you know? Yeah. It's just it is what it is. Yeah, but what it is, um, I'm not, I'm not a a, a, a fan of both either party. I just Republican because I enjoy my freedoms here in this country. Yeah, I don't have don't. allegiance to anybody. If the uh, if the Republicans stop doing what they're doing, I'm not gonna have allegiance yeah. to them. Democrats can say whatever they want, and blacks will always have always have an allegiance to them. Why I don't know. Yeah, they got women. I mean, they got dudes competing against. <laughs> They got men competing against women. That is crazy. Yeah. So how did that happen? How did black people in America get lumped in with LGBTism? It, it says it's that movement because they're both minorities that was marginalized. I mean, I understand what it uh, gave people. They've been marginalized because of how you know how they dr- act, how they dress. Yeah. I get that. 
You know what? Anything anybody that's been marginalized, they can be easily manipulated. Yeah, they're right. so easy to manipulate. Yeah, you can exploit the hell out of them. Yeah, because of the. There's a reason why Joe Biden said, "If you don't vote for me, you're not black." Right. I mean, it's it's just the way it is. That's the yeah. way life is. If and, you're black, you're Democrat. And, and touch on what Keep was saying. I don't have have an allegiance either. The only reason why I'm Republican, the only reason why I'm Republican, is because I want the government to stay out of my life. Right. I don't want nothing to do with them. I don't want you to have nothing to do with my kids' school or anything like that. I right. just want to be left alone. I mean, look what happened during the pandemic. Got to wear a mask. Got to get vaccinated to go out and eat, yeah. to keep your job. At first, both parties was in, uh, was in on that. Yeah. But then over time, the Republicans, okay, this is too much. This yeah. is just political theater. We have so much more, um, you know, evident, you know, you know, we know now what COVID is about. Right. Then you start to see what Florida, what DeSantis did. You right. start to see what Texas did. Yeah. But who kept pushing all the mandates, all the masks, all the... The it's vaccinations to get your job or keep your job. Yeah. And now look what the CDC did. They threw all of that. You don't have to do any of that now. Right. But look at all the nurses they fired who were on the front lines when it, uh, COVID first broke. They didn't have no vaccine, but yeah. they went out there and helped people anyway. But then at the end, they fired them if they didn't get the vaccine. Right. Like, who so was pushing that? Who was pushing all that? Liberals. Liberals. Yeah. Democrats. They're pro-government. That's why I'm a Republican. Yeah. I don't up believe in any of Up stuff. in Washington, D.C., they get ready to go on school online if you're a kid. You have to be vaccinated. To go if you're to- not vaccinated, you don't get attend. You don't you don't have the privilege to attend in school. Right. Yeah. These are all Democrats. Right. It's about obedience. It's not mm-hmm. about safety. Yeah, exactly. It's about it's all power about and them flexing on you and obedience. It's all That's about what they con- want. Yeah, it's all about conformity. If you don't com- if yeah. you don't comply. We take away all your rights, all your privileges, and only one party is doing that, and that's the Democrats. Yeah. I don't think I don't even think we should be calling these people <clears throat> Democrats because they're not Democrat. They're right. not even liberal. Yeah. Right. They're none of that. Right. They used to be, but not anymore. They call it progressive. Being progressive, being somebody slave to your government, believing in big government, that's yeah. not being progressive. You, that's regressive. Are you familiar with libertarianism? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah libertarian. Yeah. What are your thoughts about that's a Republican that doesn't have the balls to say they're Republican? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, but Libertarian and Republicans are pretty much one and the same. Yeah. I got a hey, if I was I living, got to an argument. if I'm living right beside two Libertarians, I'm happy. I just don't want a progressive living beside. <laughs> yeah, me. yeah. Those people are batshit crazy. Yeah, they are just they are crazy. Yeah. When did you guys make the shift? Like, I don't know about you. I, I've heard mm-hmm. some of your videos where you say you were liberal when you were younger. It's almost like we have to be. When I was younger, I was liberal also, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a clear shift in my mind at a certain point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When was it for you guys? <laughs> Obama's second term. I didn't vote for him. Yeah. Uh, President Barack Obama is the major reason why I'm conservative. Uh, and that, when you just start paying attention to both sides, at first I just paid attention to the left. I didn't listen to what the other side. I just thought they were racist. If you click on the TV and listen to what the right has to say, and you listen to both, you figure one of them's lying. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you keep watching, like, wait a minute, this yeah. is bullshit. You know what I mean? That's when we had yeah. that eye opening experience for us. And yeah. COVID should have been an eye opening experience for everyone. Yeah. Because they label people essential and non essential. Right. You could even go to work. Yeah. But the big companies like Walmart, Target, the top 1%, the top 1%, yeah. they could have their stores open. How about the average person with that business? You can't open. Right. Yeah. Who pushed all of that? It's Democrats. Yeah. Right. They for the top one percent. They are they are for the elites. They're not for the little man. Right. They say they are, right. but they're not. Not when COVID broke out. How can you label people uh that that's not rich less than? Yeah. You know? Right. It's you know, a lot of times we say communist, but it seems more like totalitarian. Yeah. 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 One of the same, yeah. yeah totalitarian. They- they won't have control of every aspect of your life. Yeah. Yeah. What was which it? is a dangerous thing. Yeah. Which is but very dangerous. We're there, right? Like, mm-hmm. are you carrying a smartphone in your pocket? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So we're being tracked and listened to. It's not even like a conspiracy theory. <laughs> you anymore. know what's yeah. weird? When I get in my car after filming videos, it's telling me how much time I got before I get home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. like, what the fuck no, is where you going? <laughs> What, like, what was it about? You know what's crazy? I don't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. But I'll be talking about something. We'll be talking about a new movie. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I go into Google, I get an ad for that. Yep. I was like, is this phone listening to me? Yes. Yeah. That shit is weird. I'll be talking about a topic, and then I get an ad on it. Yeah. Oh, I need some new boots. I go to, bam, there's a boot ad. 
I gotta admit, I kind of like that. Yeah. A part of that, I, I part feet, of that I like, but a part of it's like, man. <laughs> yeah, it's if, creepy. If this falls into the wrong hands, I'm screwed. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. And so before we started, we were talking about mm-hmm. how the Chinese Communist Party potentially owns TikTok and is tracking mm-hmm. all the things that we got going on. So on <clears> one end, it's convenient to have the phones and it's convenient to get, I like yeah. getting ads for yeah. stuff that I want. Right, wow, right, they know exactly what I want. But yeah. on the other hand, we're giving away what people fought for if you think about the fall of Eastern Europe and what happened there with the Bolshevik Revolution. They would have to tap your house, mm-hmm. they would tap your phone, mm-hmm. they would have neighbors watching you, mm-hmm. but they don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, yeah. it's like, it's almost like, it's, it, it, I mean, I might be wrong on this, but I mean, we have a Fourth Amendment right in this country. You know, for privacy, that shit going around the Fourth Amendment, right? You know? I think maybe a lot of it started with nine uh, mm-hmm. eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's how, that's how the governments get you. They you give up some of your rights to ensure you safety. Yeah. That's how they do it. But they can't ensure your safety. But they can't ensure your safety. It's like kind of like COVID. You got to give up some of your rights so we can take care of you. Yeah. That's how it works. But politicians and the government they use that against you. They use when something bad happens. I forget that one thing what Ronald Reagan said. When the government comes up to you and say, "Hey, I'm here to help," you should run. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because everything the government touches, they just turn it to shit. Just like the whole thing that's in the news about the um, college loans. Yeah. Right. The Biden wants to um, give people ten thousand. People don't realize how uh, that all started. The government came in and said, "Look, everybody should be able to go to school. So we're going to make it college loans accessible for everyone, regardless of your credit." Yeah. The government's going to come in and uh, guarantee these loans so everybody can go to school. So the poor black person can, can go to school, right? Yeah. So the poor um, Latino can go to school, which was great, right? But what did the colleges and universities do once they did that? They jacked the rates up. Right. Yeah. That's why college is so expensive now. Right. Because anybody can go if they just go out and get a loan. Right. Now the government, the government screwed all that up. So now the government, oh, man, this is horrible. All these college loans, you know what? We're going to be the good guys. We're going to pay 10000 of it off for you. When yeah. they created the problem, yeah. right, the left doesn't see that. Yeah. They don't because Democrats prey on people's ignorance for votes. They don't understand that. The yeah. government screwed all this up to begin with Yeah, to make everybody happy, to make a college accessible to everybody. And you know what's funny? The people didn't go to college, right? Or the people that went to college, they paid for out of pocket. They saved the money, you know? They end up paying for the college loans, right? Through taxes. Everything's going to be funded through taxes. But what the liberals and the left don't understand who's getting their college loans, they're getting the um, 10000 to 20000 waived off of their debt. They're also, their taxes is going up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They don't get that. Right. Everybody's right. screwed. Right. Everybody's taxes got to go up to compensate. If everybody's taxes don't go up, we, we're, we're screwed anyway. Our tax is still going to go up because of inflation. Yeah. The price of goods, the price of money goes, the value of the dollar goes down, and it causes inflation. I think DeSantis said his best. Why Why does the truck driver who never went to college paying for some idiot's gender studies degree in California? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It totally doesn't make any sense. It should be that person's responsibility, not the government. Yeah. Or not somebody else's. That's what Democrats do. They victimize everybody. It's not your fault. You're a right. fucking idiot. You <laughs> right. didn't know better to get this college loan. We're going to come in and take care of it for yeah. you. Right. But you come in and vote for me because I'm going to take care of you. Yeah. They victimize everybody. Yeah. So you have to be a victim mm-hmm. and you, you need somebody to take care of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't help but feel that that's a very effeminate way for mm-hmm. a man to be. Mm-hmm. Very. Would you agree that any man that's not a conservative is actually a woman? <laughs> I g- think you wanted something now. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a woman's mindset. Yeah, yeah it is. So, yeah, it's, it's a child's mindset for one somebody other than yourself to take care of you. Right. Yeah. You know? Nobody but, can take care of you like you. Yeah. Nobody can. If you let the government take care of you, they're going to... They're going to determine what's best for you, not you. Yeah. Only person that can determine what's best for you and your family, your kids, your life is you, not you're the government. Just, you're just a number to the government. They don't even know you exist. Right. Yeah. You're just some equation they, they put in some computer and it comes up, okay, this is what you get. Yeah. And you know what? We're, we're yep. both veterans. We're both former Marines. I remember I was uh, I was unemployed at the time, but I, you know I got lifetime benefits through the military. So I went to a veterans hospital. I went to a veterans hospital. They treat me like trash. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's I was like, man, I never go to another VA hospital again in my life. I mean, I was in so much pain one day I went. They was throwing me around. They were screaming at me, and I was in so much pain. I couldn't walk for almost three months, and the way they treated me, I said I would never, ever, ever walk into a VA. Yeah. They treat they treat that patient. And they're quick to want to put you on medication, too. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They put me on a gang of drugs. It's just um, it's just socialized medicine. That's what yeah. it is. And socialized medicine is the worst medicine you can get. What do you think of a society that treats their warriors so poorly? Right, like Mm. these are the men that Mm. are protecting your country, but yet you treat them like trash. Think of you know some traditional societies where the men of Mm. war were the men that were held in high regard. Right, right? Right. they got the best of everything. Right, Right. think about if you were like a Roman legionnaire or Mm. something. Mm -hmm. That's how they treat up. That's how they've been treating our police officers. That's how they treat the military, especially when you if you can uh, if you are better. And a lot of veterans can speak to what I'm saying. When you go to VA, they treat you like trash. And look how they treating police officers nowadays. I mean, yeah. there's some bad apples. There's bad apples in any profession. Yeah. Hell, you can pick up a bad prostitute. Everything's got bad in it. But <laughs> right. they think everything's supposed to be perfect. Like cops ought to be perfect when they're not perfect. When they're far than from less than being perfect. Yeah. It's funny, like if you like one black person do something bad, it's horrible to say all black people are like that. Right. But they they place that on cops, they place that on politicians. It's like they're all bad. Just one person does something bad, they're all bad. Yeah. They generalize everything. But when it comes to them, they can do no wrong, you know? Right. They don't like to generalize stuff when it comes to them. Yeah. But um And the majority of these people are, are not conservative or Republican. It's the people that like to victimize themselves. Yeah. I'd never right. be a victim. And if I am a victim, I'm not going to make an excuse. I'm going to do something about it. You Are know? you guys familiar with the Willie Lynch letters? It was going around for a couple of years. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It was this, apparently these letters were written to slave masters mm-hmm. in order to best control your slaves. Right. You know, some people say it's a conspiracy theory, but you can look it up. It's out there. And they had a, he had a method. He said, guarantee way to control your Negroes is by this method. Mm-hmm. And one of the things, or the, the, the foundation of the method was you got to remove the father from the mother. Let mm-hmm. them breed and then separate them mm-hmm. and then make the woman afraid for the life of her sons mm-hmm. so that she raises fearful boys that are, you know, yes men that mm-hmm. will do what they have to do because mama don't want to see them get hurt. Right. And raise their daughters to be strong, mm-hmm. to defend themselves. Mm-hmm. I can't help but to think that even though that may have been something for African slavery, if you would call it, mm-hmm. it seems like that's where everybody is today. It yeah. seems like, well, the whole country's been Willie lynched. Right. And yeah. men are separated and, you know, bastardized. All of this is an attack on masculinity. Right. From right. what I hear yeah, you guys are saying. So, yeah. mm-hmm. And then it's focus on the woman and training her to teach her boys and girls to live in this perverted way. Well, right. boys are thinking like victims. They're thinking mm-hmm. like, protect myself. You uh, know who initiated that, right? The President Lyndon Johnson with the welfare state to remove the black man. Yeah, from when he family. did it in the country. And so, they gave the uh, blacks welfare. Right. A woman didn't need a man anymore. So what happened with those, what do you call it, the lynch papers? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can see that entirely in the breakdown of the black uh, family. Right. Yeah. You can totally see that. Yeah. And you just bring that up, it's like... White supremacy, in a way, does still exist today, but not in the way people think it does. Right. You know? And the Democrat black voter don't see that. Yeah. Like, I, I think, what's the percentage of black men that, that's in a family with their kids? It's like a, it's like a joke now. Right. It's Where's right. my father? And everybody laughs at it. White people look, yeah. laugh at it because black men do not stay around for their kids at all. Yeah. And it's like, was this by chance or was this by design? Yeah. And it seems like it was to me. Yeah, yeah prior to the mm-hmm. 1950s, the black family was very conservative. Very, yeah, very Republican, yeah. Yeah. Christian, mm-hmm. stayed together. Dr. Moses stayed King together was with the Republican. Kids. Yeah. Like, it's like everything started to turn when they assassinated him. Yeah, and then when Lennon, they assassinated um, Malcolm X because uh, two days before he was murdered, he was trashing Democrats. You can find the uh, audio on YouTube. And yeah. Two days later, oh, Malcolm he, X. Yeah, Malcolm yeah, X. That's he was right. shot and killed. He called them foxes with sharp teeth or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, uh, wolf in sheep's clothing, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know what's funny? Um, the night he was assassinated, there was no police protection, and two black men, two black men, his own people, yeah. created a diversion so he could be shot and killed. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That wasn't a white supremacist who did. Now that. you just get canceled, though. Yeah. Yeah. 
They just mm-hmm. shut you up, unplug you. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys have children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got three kids. I got four. Okay. One's, well, one's she, all grown up. She's uh, forget, man. She's. I hate to think how old she is now, because man, it just it makes me feel real old. Because <laughs> I we're gonna be forty eight. Okay. This uh, September, so yeah. shit's flying. How by. old are your children? Uh, my daughter, she just turned fifteen. My son, he's eleven, and then my old my older um son. He's uh, 19, and then my, my daughter, she's uh, tw- 25. Fuck. She's 25? Yeah. Did you, uh, did she go to college? Yeah, uh, she's going to college. Um, I haven't been much in her life until recently, but uh, I understand she lives in, she li- lives in, the, oh, she moved back to California, but she's mad liberal. Yeah. Her, Bernie Sanders. Oh, man. Because she's young. She doesn't understand yet. Right, 25. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah she un- she doesn't understand, so. Yeah, How old are um, your children? Um, my oldest is my daughter, Dana. She's 22. Then I have Joshua. He's 15. And then uh, my youngest, uh, Jacob, he's uh, 11. How are you guys raising your, your children to uh, uphold the values that you guys are, are I just, living by? One word. Just don't make yourself a victim. Yeah. Don't victimize yourself. Yeah. Everything that happens in your life is because of what you did or because what you felt to see what was going to happen. Yeah. And when something bad happens to you, learn from it. Don't blame anybody else. Yeah. If people I, could stop being victims, Democrats would just die out. They would go extinct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the things I see with police officers shooting unarmed men, I was like, you know what? I said, it's, these cops, they're in a life or death struggle. Mm-hmm. They're going to make, you know, quick decisions. Some, some it's gonna, they're going to regret some. They're going to feel that was, you know, necessary. I just... I just tell my kids, it's like, look, if you don't break the law and you follow cops' orders, so you'll never be shot and killed. If the cops wrong, disobey his orders. You'll see him in court. Right. You can't settle these things out in the street. You can't right. settle them with your hands and fists. You have to be civilized. Yeah. And just wait your turn in court. Yeah. I never. It's always been common sense to me. If I'm like engaged with a cop and he's a putting me in handcuffs, I never thought to like punch him in the face and try right. to take his gun. Yeah. It's just that's just so stupid to me. Yeah. I think that's an entitlement <laughs> attitude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is yeah. very why, why are you entitled to punch a cop in the face? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And what, you wouldn't go up and punch a stranger on the street with a gun on his hip, but why would you do it to a cop? Yeah. It's like where it were your parents? Sense. Like where did they learn that? To yeah. me, I can't help but think that, you know. A lot of these people don't even have a dad. They have That's a mom. That's why I was going with it. And it's mama's co- mind. And a lot of times, in, in regardless of the ethnicity, ethnicity of the family, whether they're black or white, sure. a lot of these women that are growing up, the single parents, they're angry, they're bitter. Mm-hmm. And their kids, when they're, when they're raising their kids, they, they it rubs off on their kids. Yeah. So when their kids get out, they come out bitter, angry, upset, and malcontent, and and acting like a uh, acting like a woman, right? Acting like a pissed off woman. Yeah, can't control their emotions or anything. Yeah, right. Looks horrible in a man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I remember you guys mentioned last night that you're Christian. Mm-hmm. Have you always been? Yeah, I was yeah. raised Christian. Yeah, yeah. I sin too, but I'm Christian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're all sinners. Yeah, I mean, it's but tough being a Christian, not? man. If you ever read that Bible, man. Yeah. I mean, some of that stuff. You, you can't even look at another woman's like, oh, man, she's hot. You're going to burn in hell for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a sin. Yeah, you that's know, a sin. So. Just to, oh, man, look at her. Jesus. <laughs> you know, so it's tough being a Christian, man. Yeah. yeah. But I try, man. With with the um, uh, Nation of Islam, they cover up the women. So right. you don't. Which is crazy to me. Which that's is crazy. oppressive to me. Yeah. Like it's the well, woman's I think it fault. Also, right. I think you also taking away my right. It's like, oh man, I can't even see anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But I, I um when I look at that man, when I see women dressed that way, I was like, I mean, I understand that that that's their religion, but I was like, how can you uh cover yourself up like you're less than and a man can wear whatever they want? And it's your fault that a man is turned on to you. That's the whole purpose of them covering themselves up, you know. Do you, wh- what are your thoughts on modesty, modesty in dress for women and your daughters? Right, you guys have daughters. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, modesty I, I look, is no longer right. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. yeah for women, I, I look at it like this. I'm a Christian. I know. I, I, I try to as much as possible live by Christian values, even though I, I fall short of that goal every day. Sure. But I also understand that I'm a constitutionist and I believe in a free country. I mean, I'm not going to push my faith on nobody else. If my 
if my my daughter want to dress a certain way when she comes 18 it's her right that's her freedom to do so i'm just going to be there to advise her and give her advice I'm never going to force my beliefs on my kid even though i'm gonna tell my kids you know be leery of uh, these politicians and victimization and and whatever you hear on tv you can't you can't believe in any shit but mm. i always first and foremost i say you're a free woman you're a free man you're you have the the freedoms to live your life how you want. Even though I may not agree with them, I always free them first. Yeah. Because a lot of people let that religion get in front of them. So um, my question then is, if we're conservative, then what are we actually conserving, right? Like mm -hmm. morals, value, mm -hmm. virtue, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And where do those come from? Is that, mm -hmm. is that uh, uh, subjective, we make up our own? A lot of it, I would say, is religious, you know, because a lot of the morals that we have is in the Bible. I mean, even if you don't even believe in God, man, some of the best advice you can learn is from a Bible. Like when I read a Bible, it's like it doesn't even feel like religion. It's like philosophy. Right. It's like advice. It's like it has nothing to do with a higher being. It just feel like somebody who's lived life before you and they're advising you on their mistakes and what to do in certain situations yeah. and how to live. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and we have that. We have a lot of guidance in that way. Like, mm -hmm. are you familiar with uh, Thomas Aquinas? Mm -hmm. He was he was a Catholic theologian, but he took mm -hmm. a lot of his foundation from Aristotle, mm -hmm. and Plato, and and um, philosophers. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And so, I just started gotten, uh, getting into philosophy over the last month. I've been starting to read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If if we want to understand, like, so if the restoration of the West is a goal, uh, you know, or conserving it at least, whatever mm -hmm. the hell is left. Uh, my opinion is that we have to go back to those philosophies that and traditions yeah. mm -hmm. that built Western civilization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been bastardized to such a degree that it's the funniest thing when mm -hmm. white people hate white people. White people hate <laughs> being European or they hate being American. They hate so, and it's so dumb. Right, yeah, not so realizing dumb. the beauty of the philosophy mm -hmm. and the foundation that mm -hmm. made Western civilization mm -hmm. so damn amazing. Yeah, it resulted yeah. in the first country in the, uh, in the world, the best country in the world. Yeah. Where would this world be without America? Yeah. Germany would be in power, more than likely. Yeah. You know you what I mean? You think so? Yeah, definitely. If the USA doesn't get in that, in that uh, world war, I think Germany wins the war. Yeah. And if Germany won the war, what would we have? We'll be talking German right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we'll be serving hot plates to white people. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we'll be serving hot plates and sandwiches. Be dressed up like butlers and shit, looking at all the white women like, damn. <laughs> Look at this shit. You stupid. No, but um, it's just it's just um, that's all comes from progressives. You right. should hate um, Western civilization, and it's everything that's going wrong in this world is <laughs> is backwards. Yeah. It's all coming from the left. Right. Every last bit of it. Yeah, which is weird. I mean, Republicans, we're not perfect, but shit, we're but not batshit crazy. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah we're we just, just conservative. We just, what works, and we stick with it. They trying to, like, reinvent the wheel, yeah. and they're, you can't reinvent the wheel. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's like um, everything you see a Republican doing, when you see a Republican saying something crazy, more often than not, it's retaliatory. You know, they're responding to some, what some progressive or some batshit crazy liberal said. And the liberal, they, they and a lot of these, like, the thing with Trump, a lot, a lot of the things he say, you can misconstrue him. You can twist his words around because he's not a politician. Right. So it's easy to manipulate what he says. And if if people on the left would like take the time and get the both sides of the story, you know, they would understand where he's coming from. But right. they're so good at um, believing their their own media sources. Like right. I don't trust any media source. I, was, I still look at CNN, I still look at MSNBC, I, I, I look at Fox, I look at OAN, I look at Newsmax, I look at everybody's opinions. And you would know after watching these these media sources, you know who's full of shit. Right. I mean, they've been lying about Trump for like years. Don't you think it's fascinating that a lot of these people are mm. intellectuals? Mm. You know, I don't know if you, you remember how uh, the differentiation between W.E.D. Du Bois and um, uh, I forget his name now, but there was this split mm -hmm. between the intellectual mm -hmm. that right. started the progressive move, Northerners, yeah. mostly. It's so fascinating to me that these people are so smart, book smart, degrees. Mm -hmm. They flood the universities, but yet they believe the stupidest stuff. Yeah, because they've been, they've been taught propaganda. They haven't been really taught anything. Yeah. Did you see that one black lady? She went to Congress 
and she's a law professor. I think it was UC Berkeley. Yeah. You probably missed her. I think her. Georgetown. I think it was, was Georgetown. Was it Georgetown? I think so. I'm not sure. She was from a, a, a prestigious. Georgetown University, I want to say. Was it Georgetown? Yeah, I think so. Well, she was from a prestigious law university. She went to Congress and said some of the dumbest shit a, a homeless person would laugh at her. Right. What she said. Mm -hmm. She's up there talking about how um, men can get pregnant and have babies. And how childbirth is not mutually exclusive to females. Right. It that was, men can have babies. And right. she was. A five-year-old knows the difference. Yeah. yeah. And it's like all this stuff has been taught. That's, see, that's another thing. I read this book by Mark Levin. And he said, this is why they want to uh, throw out the student loans and everybody can go for free because these universities are far left. All the teachers are far left. They want everybody to go to school so they can indoctrinate them with this bullshit so they'll vote Democrat. Mm -hmm. That's why they want everybody to go to school for free. That's why they got that border open. Right. They want to change the demographic of America. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And because also when you – the Democrats are known as, okay, we're letting you in, so don't forget to vote for us to take care of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why they're more likely the people that's coming here illegally are going to end up voting Democrat. Yeah, when it comes to being a politician, Democrats are better politicians. Yeah. Oh, they're, yeah. You know, they're always thinking, Slick. how can I get a vote? Republicans yeah. mm -hmm. are not like that. Yeah, Republicans will never pander for votes. Yeah, Republicans do what's right for everyone, yeah. and they got to get smart at um. Being, being better poli politicians. politicians. Yeah. Would you go so as far as to say that progressivism in the Democratic Party is diabolical? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's Satan. They, yeah. they yeah, call it's themselves Satan. progressive, but they're not progressive. They're socialists. Yeah. They're, they want big government. They want government hand in everything. Just like with the abortion protests. You see right. how crazy those people got. How yeah. With blood all over them between their legs. And, yeah. And it's like. Yeah. It's like they don't realize not only are you killing a kid, you're killing your own flesh and blood. Yeah. And but, but see, yeah. they've been the reason why they think the way they think is because Democrats tell them this is a right. Right. This is your body. But they don't understand there's two bodies involved at this point. You know? Yeah. It's yeah, de and Democrats they're are diabolical. Push, they're trying to push this, they want to end abortion because they want more white babies born in America. And that, and that's BS. But that's not a bad problem. <laughs> Of course not. Right? Yeah, but why is that a problem? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but it's like um, the reason why they say that because they want they think they want to bring white supremacy back. They want the white population to grow. They don't want. But that. that's the thing. If they if they really wanted that, they would have just banned abortions for black people. You know what I'm saying? Right. They, and who's they, they would have just said only black people can get abortions. But who's getting most of their abortions? Right. Yeah. Minorities, black people. Yeah. Up in New York, they get more abortions than black kids are being born. Yeah. So it's just a dumb argument that they make. Yeah. They don't understand. Yeah. But, you know, abortion, that shouldn't be politicized. Like uh, abortion, uh, global warming, that should not be a, um, that shouldn't be politicized. We didn't, shouldn't even be talking about it. We should be doing what's morally best for the world and for, for women. You know, that shouldn't even be on the voters' ballot. We shouldn't be, uh, oh, I'm voting for this person because he's pro, he's pro choice. Yeah. That shouldn't even be an issue. It should, we should be just doing what's right for society. And that's that's horrible for society. I'm not, uh, you know, diametrically opposed to women getting, you know, abortion. But at some point, the Democrats, they were saying things like, man, you get abortion up until birth. And someone was starting to say that you can have an abortion after the baby's born. I mean, there's videos of Beto O'Rourke on on camera. There's there's uh, the New York governor. There is Kamala Harris asked that very same question. And their response to that question is always it's woman's choice. A baby's just been born is still a woman's choice. That's sick and that's disgusting. And and this just goes to show you how far a Democrat will go to just get a boat. They'll sacrifice a young child that's just been born for a boat. Yeah. I heard recently that they were trying to position it as a religious right. Mm -hmm. You heard that? Is there a religious right mm -hmm. to sacrifice babies? Now the only religion I know or heard of in the Bible is those that worship Baal. Yeah. Right. These big <laughs> demon statues where they would sacrifice their baby and yeah. put them on the fire. Is that what we're doing today? Yeah, that's weird. That's going well, backwards. That's a uh, that's a big time business behind abortions. Those body parts are not just going in the trash. Yeah. Huh. There's pharmaceutical companies buying that and research and I mean, they're taking the melanin from the black kids and selling it so white people can have tans. I mean, people just Yeah, so they will It's big business. There's universities will pay hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars for a fetus just so they can study. 
Yeah. It's big business. Yeah. There was a time when there was a conflict between the church and and science, obviously, mm -hmm. where they wouldn't even allow you to open up a cadaver, you know, a dead, an adult. Mm -hmm. But now it's mm -hmm. a baby. Yeah, they don't yeah. care. It's like, yeah. I can understand a person dying from natural causes, but right. they're taking a boarded fetus and study it. It's like yeah. it's taking, pretty, um, yeah. The stem cells and all that stuff and selling it and yeah, because that wasn't that baby's choice. You're like you know, when you die, you can put down and say, "I want my body donated to science." Yeah. Right. You know that child, that that unborn child doesn't have that right. You know, doesn't have didn't have that choice. I mean, didn't have that choice. I mean, I can understand you taking a cadaver or a dead body of a person. Shows, hey, if I die, donate my organs or donate my body to science. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. But to take a baby and abort it because you think it's your right, and then to donate that fetus for money and for science. I that's a big that, time. That's a billion dollar industry. Yeah, that's kind of... That's, Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know who founded Planned Parenthood, right? Tell me. Margaret Sanger. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, she was a eugenist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A eugenicist. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to see black people uh Yeah, that's the diminished. major reason why we have abortion. They want to rid the world of black babies. Right. Yeah. That's right. the only reason why we have abortion. And look how... Uh, over time, how the the people on the left has spun that, they don't know the history of that. It right. was to kill black kids. It was never about a woman's choice. It was to we. It was to do away with black kids. Yeah, and black like the people. the new abortion laws for like heartbeat laws that they've been putting in place. After once to have a heartbeat, you can't get an abortion. Like they already have these laws in like Europe, restrictive right. laws. Like they already have all of this stuff. This is not something they've realized that this is evil. What they're doing. Yeah. You know, as far as abortion, up until nine months, it's crazy. My daughter was born premature. She was seven. She was almost eight months, just under eight months when she was born. It's yeah. just crazy. And a lot of these people on the left, when they, they, these late-term abortions, they don't know what that looks like. You can go on YouTube. You can see what that looks like. Right. They think they're going to take a pill and the baby's just going to dissolve. No, they got to tear that baby limb from limb. They got to pull the skull out. They got to pull the arms, legs, you still give torso. Birth to it. You still get. You still giving birth. That's why I don't understand why a, a liberal politician can't stand up and do the moral things. Say, look, you're going to have the baby anyway. You might as well have the baby alive. Mm -hmm. Just because you get a late term abortion doesn't mean you not don't have to give birth. You still got to pull that baby out of you. Yeah. What happened to the orphanages? Yeah, yeah. they act like we you can't do you can't give the baby yeah, up that's for a lot adoption. of people that can't have kids would love to have yeah. a kid. Yeah. Right, and they make it real hard. Like mm -hmm. they have to go overseas and. Adopt Chinese babies, mm -hmm. right. but yet we have all these children here that are dying mm -hmm. at the hands of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of putting them in, into orphanages, yeah. yeah, you just people just we got to give people options because you know I've been with women who had abortions and I used to be dumb and stupid and thought it was a woman's choice and I used birth control, but you know I was, I was young and naive at the time. I was yeah. I was a you know get, just getting pregnant is not like catching the flu or COVID. Yeah. You, <laughs> There's steps to this shit, right? right. You know, just be responsible. Yeah, it's not like wake up, oh, shit. I caught the pregnancy. <laughs> no, right. dude, busted his nuts in you. And you didn't take your precautions. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's so preventable. Right. Yeah, you got the Plan B pill now. You got all kinds of options. Yeah, you have right. options. You can pull out shit. Yeah, you can have foot jobs, blow jobs, hand jobs. <laughs> you got all these options. And and why a woman would want to wait to have a an abortion late term? When you have all these options, you right. walk around with this kid, you feel the baby moving, and it's just, man, it's just disgusting how, how the left is pushing this, you know? And it's only one side pushing that. Yeah. It's the Democrats. When you love America, there's a tendency to associate it with freedom and liberty. Mm -hmm. I know that's very attractive to me. What do you say when someone says that I live in a free country, you shouldn't be able to encroach on my ability to do that? Where does where is there a limit on our liberty? Yeah, yeah that's always uh, mm -hmm. it's always a fine line between it's like when it comes to your Second Amendment, amendment rights. You know, to have a gun, um, it it used to be everybody could have a gun, but now it's like if you're a felon and you're robbing people, now we take that right away from right. you. Right. So I mean, there's always um, a fine line when it comes to your rights. 
Yeah, I think you have to earn those privileges. I mean, you're born with those privileges, but if if you're making bad decisions, I mean, some of these rights should be taken away from people. Yeah, like, right. if you're a murderer or you're a rapist, you shouldn't be able to vote. That's a conflict of interest for women, you know? <laughs> or if yeah. you're robbing people, you shot and killed somebody, you get out of prison, you did your time. I don't think you should have the right to own a gun because you've already proven to us that true. you have a tendency to overreact or just do horrible things. So, I mean, I wish... Uh, you could stand by the Constitution. It's black and white. Everybody should have a gun. Everybody should do this. But, yeah. you know, some people are evil. Some people mm-hmm. are dangerous. Some people shouldn't have these certain rights, yeah. you know. I, I, I think the answer to your question is, um, I mean, so long as your rights don't trump another person's rights is a good guideline to live by, mm-hmm. you know. So earlier we kind of agreed that liberal men are like women. Mm-hmm. And that there's a certain attitude that's associated with wanting to be taken care of, mm-hmm. being a victim. I call it effeminate. It's more natural to a woman's nature. A man's mm-hmm. nature is to stand up, to provide, to protect, mm-hmm. to fight, to mm-hmm. push, mm-hmm. to push forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I ponder this question, and I'm curious what you guys' thoughts are on women's right to vote. We're talking about voting now, Mm -hmm. and we're looking at the world post breaking up the family, splitting Mm -hmm. the vote essentially, Mm -hmm. and giving women the right to vote. Would you? Would you? Would you agree with me that if women didn't vote, we wouldn't be where we are right now? Um, A lot of people, um, a lot of women, especially when it comes to the pro-choice, right? It's it's women voting for that, right? They have been. um, They're the major purveyors of that. Of that, of uh, pro choice, they are, they want. I don't never understand why a woman would march up and down the street to kill her own kids. Right. You know? Yeah. Um. When it comes to women voting, I think they should have the right to vote. Mm-hmm. It's just that ignorance hurts whether you're a man or a woman. Right. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of ignorance when it comes to women about certain issues, mm-hmm. and politicians take advantage of them, and it, it right. ruins society for everyone. But you can find that same ignorance in a man. You yeah. know what I mean? There's ignorant ass men out there that that's, that's that think the same way as women. So I think they both should be able to vote. It's just that ignorance. It hurts the male voter. It hurts the female voter, and it hurts society altogether. That's what Socrates. I was reading about him. He said, "Not everybody should be able to vote, right. whether you're a man or a woman. Mm-hmm. You should meet certain levels as far as education you have to and, take and a logic a before test. you can vote right. for men and women, because idiots will eventually ruin your society." Right. Yeah. That's why so, we have the electoral college. Right. Yeah. That's the main reason why we have it, because if you take away that electoral college, the idiots would ruin our country. Right. Yeah. You would have L.A., Chicago, New York City, San Francisco decide all our elections. Yeah, and that's what the Democrats have in their favor. There's always going to be more ignorant people than there are people that's got it together. You know what I mean? You always because it takes more energy to not be ignorant. Yeah. It's real easy to just cut on your TV and listen to CNN and just like, oh, man, that's, that's wrong and just believe that. Yeah. It's just being ignorant. Yeah, it takes you a know? lot of energy to think. To think and learn what exactly is going on and see it from both sides. There, so the Democrats will always have that in their favor. Yeah. But they also have the intellectual class. Mm-hmm. They own the universities. They own the media. Mm-hmm. And so it's a kind of a mix in a way between yeah. ignorance, and they try to pin us as what they call deplorables. Yeah. yeah. Ignorance, but also hyper intellectualization of everything yeah. such that we live in a friggin' make believe world. Yeah, but right. they're the elites, actually. Right. They're the elites, and they're just putting out that propaganda for all the regular Joes. Yeah. And the regular Joes look up at them like, oh man, they're educated. They do this, they do that. So they just believe them. It's their authority fallacy. They just believe them because they're an authority figure. Yeah. So, I mean, Democrats, man, it's. Um, they just better politicians. They just better politicians. They're just smarter. They just I don't know what it is, but the elites, they're all on the left and they control the population yeah. with their uh, propaganda. Yeah, majority Schools, of people maybe. on the left, they're just like little puppets. People are pulling their strings the whole time. Right. Mm-hmm. They don't even realize it. They think they're free. They think mm-hmm. they're working for them. No, you're just a puppet. That's all you are. Yeah. I just think Stalin called them uh useful idiots. Yeah. yeah. Mark Levin calls them that too in yeah. his book. Yeah. yeah, American Marxism, yeah. useful idiots. American Marxism, mm-hmm. interesting, mm-hmm. cool sounding book. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, book. are you guys familiar with Bolshevik Revolution? Oh, basically, all the revolutions were. Mm-hmm. Diabolical. I need to get my reading game up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you read a lot, you, huh? Yeah, you read a lot. YouTube. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. I watch videos. Mm-hmm. I'll read. Um, I'm fascinated with, or I've always been fascinated with who I am and what I am. Mm-hmm. Being a mixed race person, so I've always been curious about mm-hmm. how did I get here and what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I want to know the truth, mm-hmm. and so I've always been been very curious in that way. One of the things that really drives me is this sense that maybe we could turn it back around, or the pendulum is going to mm-hmm. swing back the other way. But you can't fight if you don't know your enemy. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's a matter of really like diving deep into who, who's behind this and mm-hmm. how did it all start, and mm-hmm. we're at a point now where like. Davos and mm-hmm. uh, the new world, you know, what was it, the economic world, economic forum, right. mm-hmm. these world leaders are basically pulling our strings, pulling yeah. the whole planet. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the old days when there was slavery, you knew you was a slave because you could see and feel your chains. Right. You know, nowadays you can't even see those chains. How can you tell a slave he's a slave or she's a slave when she doesn't even know she's a slave, that she can't even feel or see her chains? Yeah. Wearing a mask. They're yeah. Mentally enslaved. They don't even yeah. realize it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And we're, and we're all there in a way. So what what do you guys think? I have some opinions about what would get us. Listen, progress is just taking us over a cliff. I don't think it's a matter of moving forward. Mm-hmm. If we're going to restore, it's a matter, that's why I even use the word conservative, right? You have mm-hmm. to have something to conserve, hold on to. Right. What are you guys' thoughts on what are some things that will bring us back to order and stability in the culture? I think actually when Biden became president, it opened up a lot of people's eyes um, just to see how the, the, the um, direction the country is going. You know, like inflation's a huge problem, but they still spending money like it's no tomorrow. And that's that's what causes inflation. Just like the student loan thing, ten thousand dollars for everybody, that causes that's inflationary. That's right. Yeah, he calls inflation. He's saying he's not causing inflation, but all his policies are in fueling inflation. Yeah, they're sending billions of dollars to Ukraine. Yeah, that's right. inflationary. That's that that we don't even have that money. They're actually printing that money and sending it to them. That causes inflation. His all his policies. There was a a bill that he wanted to pass when he first became president. And it was, I think it was worth, uh, it was worth like a trillion dollars, but it got it voted down. That was going to be inflationary. Yeah. I mean, How about all these vaccines that the government is funded? It's, yeah. it's, they don't have that money. Yeah. They made the rich richer. Yeah. From this last pandemic. Amazon, all the big companies got richer while the poor man just got poor and poor. Yeah. And the, the Democrats, they love this whole transgender movement. Uh, men can be women and compete against women. It's, it's just people are. Uh, seeing them for what they are. Sometimes you got to take two steps back before you can stay, take a step forward. I think his whole presidency has showed that. Look at his son. Look at right. his family. I mean, it's a complete disaster. Yeah. You know, so I think it's going to be a red wave in the midterms when it comes to the Congress. Right. And uh, I think we're going to take the White House back. That's that's what I think is going to happen. Yeah. I was, uh, just like you guys, mm-hmm. it was Obama's second term right. mm-hmm. that I started waking up. Completely transparent. Alex Jones had a lot to do with it. Yeah, yeah. I got hooked on Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was watching his videos every day, and he put me on to uh, Ron Paul. Mm-hmm. You know, okay, Ron Paul. He's a libertarian, but mm-hmm. right, libertarian. right, right. And, this and his was son the, is uh, f- I said, Rand. Rand Paul. Yeah, yeah. He was the first person I ever listened to in a debate that said shit that made sense. Mm-hmm. Like this guy was actually talking facts. Mm-hmm. Most of these guys they just did arguing about things that really are irrelevant. They're just yeah. mm-hmm. talking in circles. And yeah. so he was the first one that brought to my attention the scourge that the Federal Reserve Bank is on our society. Yeah. Are you guys familiar with how the banks are really? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they're manipulating everything. Yeah, I mean they have inflation built into our economy so the rich can get richer with their properties and stuff that they own. Yeah. Meanwhile, we uh, put in money each year for Social Security. By the time we get old and get that money back, that dollar we put in is worth, what, 20 cent, right. 50 cent? Yeah. Um, you buy a house, it goes up in value. You sell it because of inflation. It goes yeah. up in value. You got to pay tax on something that... you, you Like you, when you buy a house, $100,000, and you sell it for $400,000, they say you got to pay a capital gains tax right. on that oh, $300,000. $300, but guess what? You can't go buy the same house when you sell that house. It's yeah. inflation. I don't even know why. They don't even take into consideration that capital gains, how much inflation went up. Yeah. Uh, it's all inflation when your yeah, house goes up. It's all inflation. Up. Yeah. You it's shouldn't have inflation. to pay any tax. You shouldn't have to pay any tax on that because the yeah. government actually created that inflation. Yeah. Now right. the government's creating that inflation. That's a tax on everybody. So now you got to pay taxes to the government for something you had no part in. Yeah. I mean, it's great your house went up, but the government caused all of that. 
Yeah. With inflation. So they it's can make money into the money you. system. Yeah. Inflation is built in. That money I have in a bank, that money's not even there. Right? Yeah, go, they loan that money out to 10 people. Yeah, you go in the bank and try to take your money out. They don't have the money in there. Right. It's a, like a big scam. And they're making yeah. money off of your money, but they don't share the revenue that they make from that money. Like YouTube, when we are earning money on YouTube, you know, YouTube shares that money. The banks don't do none of that. Yeah. I'm getting like 0.4% interest on my savings account. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Do you guys, nobody knows the future. I like to think about it, uh, that financial collapse, like the dollar will dissolve yeah. in our lifetime. It eventually will. Yeah. All currencies have. Yeah. yeah. Every last one of them. I think so. crypto, um, cryptocurrency, I think some form of cryptocurrency is going to take over. Yeah. Do you think that that's, um, so it seems, I'm suspect because mm-hmm. to me, I look at that, I'm like, Anything that that's, is that popular, mm-hmm. I, red, red flags go off in my mind. I'm like, ah, mm-hmm. there got to be something behind that. Mm-hmm. Do you guys envision that maybe the, the reason why crypto is rising or becoming so popular is because the plan is to do a switch? Um, I The whole point of cryptocurrency was for the, the money system to be decentralized. If the government comes out with their own cryptocurrency, it's just the same it's just electric uh, fiat garbage. Right, it. it's the same thing. It's they the same use thing. They're going to use it to enslave you, too. Yeah, and they right. can track you and see exactly what you're buying. I it's don't, all digital. I don't, yeah, because mm-hmm. it's all digital. I think it should be decentralized, like Bitcoin and these other uh, cryptocurrencies. It defeats the whole purpose if the government comes out with their own coin, uh, their own cryptocurrency, because they'll just keep creating it and creating it, and, and it's still going to be inflationary or deflationary because they keep manipulating the, um, the total um, supply of the money. You know what I mean? Right. They just create more money mm-hmm. when it defeats the whole purpose. That's why cryptocurrency, that's why Bitcoin was born, because what they did with the whole banking system, they bailed them out when the banking system was going under. And that's why crypto, Bitcoin was uh, That was whole financial collapse. From because people are just tired of government being involved with the money system. Yeah. So it sounds like we agree that sound money will be one of the ways to Yeah, it's got to be back. backed by something, you know? Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. Ron so like Paul, it used to be backed by gold. gold. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they did away with that. Yeah. It was talked about gold. Uh, I'm convinced that fatherhood, not just family, but fatherhood, is a linchpin. It's been pulled out, mm-hmm. and so that's why we are where we are. But um, but the return to patriarchy, the return to patriarchs, strong men in the families, mm-hmm. is a means by which we'll. Uh, return to a traditional culture. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You look at every family, you look at society, you look at the men Mm -hmm. in those societies. If the men are weak and emotional like women, it's like- Society is going to, you know, it's going to be a degradation to society. I mean, you look at everybody, a majority of people that's in prison, female and male, they grew up without fathers. Right. You know? And I I think the men that, um, I think most of the men that's Democrat, they think with their hearts instead of their brains. Right. Uh, they think emotionally. That's not what your heart's there for. You're supposed to use your brain. Like when it comes to guns, you see something happen at a school where there's a mass shooting. Up. You, if you think with your heart, oh, ban all guns. You're not thinking with your head because criminals are not going to follow that law of you banning guns. Mm-hmm. They're still going right. to go out and commit crimes. So you got to use your brain instead of banning guns. Once you increase the security at schools, yeah. once you put. Uh, you know what I mean? Maybe teachers can have guns or put um, metal detectors, some kind of security system so kids won't um, be less likely to be attacked that way. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the difference between Republicans and um, Democrat men. One thinks with their brains and the other thinks with their heart. Yeah. And right. I think it's heartless to think with your heart. You need to think with your brain. Yeah, like look, look what happened during 9-11. What did the government do? They put TSA in there, more stricter, and then they put armed marshals. Undercover, on yeah, right. But look what the liberals do. They don't do any of that, right? Mm. But Joe Biden goes out, he, he, he that new inflation act, which is bullshit, because mm-hmm. that damn act, that, that bill he signed is going to increase inflation. He goes out and he's going to employ another 87, 85,000 yeah, 85, IRS he agents. He could have armed every oh. school right. in America. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because schools only open, what, maybe, what, six months out of the year? Mm-hmm. Could have very easily armed every school. Every mm-hmm. public school in America could be, have an armed guard. You know, there's more than enough money. But no, 
that's what the Democrats is all about. They're more about pro government, how they can make more money off of you. Like they treat us like cattle. They're not there for the little person. They're not there for the kids. They 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 preach that the Republicans don't care about your kids in schools. All they care about is their guns. But it's really the liberals who are not doing anything about it because they're going to continue to use that tool of school shootings, mass shootings, right. to, as a weapon to de-arm America. They could have very easily took that that money that they, they're using to fuel eighty seven thousand RS agents and arm our public schools. You know what would happen if the American public was disarmed? Oh man, you you'll be about- a, you'll be a slave to your government. Yeah, because you look in Europe, right? Mm-hmm. Or Australia. Yeah, yeah, look at Australia. They was mm-hmm. putting out COVID patients in concentration camps. <laughs> they right. were. <laughs> they look like consecration camps. It's a concentration. What if that disease? They said it had a a ninety nine point four percent survival rate. Imagine yeah. if COVID had a fifty percent survival rate. Right. What they they would have turned into concentration. Camps. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Those was concentration camps. Take them there to die. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I, I look at it this way: like the American people are the last freestanding army. Yeah. yeah. On the planet, I think yeah. that's what's been. Holding us tight for a little while. Yeah. yeah, we haven't snapped yet. Yeah, right. Because not everybody want to knock on the doors of right. Floridians or Texans. Yeah, right. Democrats and, are going that direction. Yeah, right, they're trying to. They, they trying to. Yeah, they really are. They really are pushing it. And when you go they overseas try. and you talk politics, I don't care whether you're in uh, Europe, Australia, especially with the the conservative Republicans in those those countries, man. They're like holding on for dear life. I hope America does not fall because if America falls, if yeah. we become a blue progressive country, I mean, the whole world's going to feel it. Right. Yeah. We're all going to feel it. We're the last ones. Mm-hmm. We're the last ones, yeah. So you guys mentioned uh, 2024 last night when mm-hmm. I was on your show. Mm-hmm. You guys are thinking that a return to Trump will be the appropriate move? You mentioned watching him. Trump finish. or DeSantis. Yeah. 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 Trump or DeSantis. Why aren't there more conservative, tr- real conservative mm-hmm. uh, candidates? That's a lot of good uh, candidates on the left. When you think about it, you got DeSantis, you got Trump. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Rand Paul. Yeah. I mean, when he ran last time, Trump just, I don't know, made fun of him and that it worked. <laughs> but Rand Paul is he's a beast. A, he's a, yeah, he he's a brilliant guy. A so. He's a brilliant guy. Yeah. Really smart guy. Yeah. Uh, educated guy. And is a logical guy. But, um, when you look at the left, they have nobody. They really don't. <laughs> All they have is Tulsi Gabbard, and they hate her. Yeah. She's logical. Yeah. But everybody else, a bunch of losers. It seems like they all hate each other anyway, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's a mm-hmm. lot of hate for Joe Biden in mm-hmm. the, in the, in the party, and tur- for Kamala Harris. They're mm-hmm. turning on them. They're, yeah. they're starting to turn on them. Useful idiots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're turning on them for the wrong reasons. Is that right? Why are yeah. they turning? I don't really know. Because they're much. not pushing, because the progressives are mad at them. Oh, you should have counseled more than 10,000. Oh, you gotcha. should have counseled more than two. What you going to do about climate change? Yeah. When you going to stop using all these oil products? They're, you know, they're turning on them for the wrong reasons. Yeah. When you going to have it, transgenders competing in Olympics? What are you going to do? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, you see what I'm saying? It's they're turning on them for, for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's how lost progressives are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Progressing straight to hell. Yeah. Do yeah. you imagine that there will be a uh, a civil war, like an armed civil war in America? I hope not. Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. I think as soon as um I think in the midterms it's gonna be a red wave. If there's a civil war, <laughs> progressives and <laughs> liberals are gonna be wiped off the face <laughs> of this planet. I don't think we right. get that far. It was funny, you guys had a joke last night yeah. about jumping in a bath of bleach. Uh, bleach, yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't wanna ever see that shit. Yeah, race but I war. don't even really imagine that because most conservative white people I know are not racist. I, I haven't come they're across. They're not. They're not. They're not. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. They're not. They they're like totally to generalize. I like to be dem- on their side. Yeah. 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 They like to generalize a demographic to fit their political agenda. That's all that is. Yeah. Right. You know. These yeah. these white. I, so I live in Lake County now. So I got a lot of redneck neighbors. Mm-hmm. And they're the kind of people I want to have on my side. Yeah. yeah. Paint up their face and climb up in a tree. Yeah. yeah. And just start picking people off. Yeah. Progress- they look at these yeah. progressive men dressing in bell bottoms and freaking long curly hair. And you, what do you think they're going to do when yeah. it comes time? To- Who's going to win a civil war? The people that hate guns or the people that love guns? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It doesn't take much to figure that one out. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are 48. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. 48. You got a couple. You got, uh, you got five years on me. Oh, no shit. oh yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm you know what the best age is, man? What? 
I say it's 36. 36 to 4, that's the, like the best years. Yeah. Really? Why would you say that? That's you're, what I was in my you're prime. You're a man. You're, 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 Your body's not falling apart too much. Yeah, you're more wiser. You're, and you're, you're just in yeah. the middle. That's like when we started YouTube, was like 32. Yeah. And then when we progressed up to about 36, man, it was like the perfect yeah. age. Yeah, people went, I want to be 20 forever. I was like, no, you don't. Right. You, don't you didn't know, know nothing. You was yeah. nothing. A man reaches his peak. Yeah. Yeah. In his mid 30s. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sexual market value. You ever mm -hmm. hear that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you're, you're, you're most valuable as a man mm -hmm. in the eyes of women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you got resources. Plus, you look like a man. When you're in your 20s, mm -hmm. you still kind of look like a yeah, boy. You're like a kid, mm -hmm. like a girl. You guys, yeah. <laughs> Definitely look like a girl. I looked at pictures think like when girl. I was 18. I said, oh my God. Yeah. Look I French. like older women too. When women get in their late 30s, early 40s, you look like a woman. Right. You're just kids when you're 20, yeah. 25. You're just a kid. You don't know nothing. So you guys are still training? Yeah, we're still training. My diet's not on par. And I don't train as hard as I used to because I'm always on the road. Yeah. Um, I used to be a lot fitter. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you about, being mm -hmm. on the road. Yeah, so you guys so brought your family with you. Mm -hmm. I thought that was fascinating. Mm -hmm. So you guys are traveling a lot. You guys yeah. work. You guys are hustling. Yeah. Yeah. I admire that. Dude, mm -hmm. When I looked at your schedule, I was like, and then I see how much content you guys are creating. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, these guys are working. Yeah, are yeah. not so just we, playing games. Yeah. Yeah. As soon so. as we get home, we got to shoot videos because we got to get right back on the road again. Yeah. yeah. I, does I your wanna... family go with you all every time you leave? My wife does. My, my, wife my does. daughter came with her this time because it's her birthday. She went to go to Universal right. Studios. And... So I was going to ask you if your wife didn't come with you, but maybe that's already answered. How do you handle yourself as a high value, good looking, status driven man? Mm. I'm sure you got groupies. Yeah, that's why my wife's there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's opportunities. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. all kinds of opportunities. Yeah, it's yeah. all kinds of white women just throw themselves at I was watching yeah, last night. Who, who was standing up to ask questions more than anything it was white women? Yeah, 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 yeah. I noticed them. Yeah. That's the same I could thing. easily take five women home at night. <laughs> I know you can. And that husband's to come with them and watch. <laughs> hey, you man, said I that. love you guys. I'm going to go ahead and give y'all reparations. <laughs> yeah. You know? So. Yeah, that's funny. I did the same thing when I yeah. started. I, I don't travel nearly as much as you I don't travel at all, actually. Mm -hmm. But I was going out a little bit here and there around 2013, 14, when I was just started coming up. Mm -hmm. And it only took one event that I went to and realized, oh, Man, I'm gonna get in trouble out here. Right, yeah. right, right. And I start yeah. bringing my wife with me everywhere I go. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And yeah. these women, I don't know, man. I would bring her sometimes, and they'll still be very aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very aggressive. They, they look at you like, uh, are y'all swingers or? <laughs> right. I, 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 had, I had, yeah, because it's a bunch of swingers coming out. Hey, man, uh, can you do me a favor? Can you? Uh, my wife really likes you. You know, can you come back to our place and uh, fuck her? <laughs> I was like, uh, think of my past, man. My wife's here. You, this is a real story. This real yeah. stories. Wow. They, they tell me to take off my shirt. Yeah. I said, D I don't. They don't. I don't have any more shirts. I said, I said can I have this? One? I was like, well, what am I gonna wear? He said, look, I give you two hundred bucks for it. <laughs> my wife wants it because it's all sweaty. Oh man, I don't know. My it, wife was standing it, right there. That's what you it call happened a in cup. Orlando, did it? it? It was actually. It was last time we said, not this time. But yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. call that cuckoldry. Yeah, you know when, <laughs> yeah. you know who invented that, right? Who's that? White people. <laughs> cuckoldry. White, cuckoldry. It's a whole yeah, they invented that shit. Yeah, they call the black they always get a black man call him the buck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get this big black buck in here to pound my white wife. And watch. <laughs> and just yeah. watch. Yeah. yeah. Get up in there, man. You're killing it. <laughs> man, look at the big cock on that Negro, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. That's entertainment. I yeah, guess yeah. people are bored. Yeah. yeah, you've been married for like thirty years. She spice things, <laughs> spice it up. Yeah, yeah. we've been married uh, over thirty years. Yeah, no, just, not over thirty. Not, not over thirty. 20, 20, yeah, um, twenty. Uh, we got married when we was twenty three. Yeah. How do you guys? Uh, you got married at twenty three? Uh, what? How, it was two thousand when I got married. Yeah, we've been married yeah. over twenty years. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you got married? Shit. 2000, I was 26. Yeah. Yeah, 26, 27, something like that. Yeah, uh, last Thursday was 20 years for me. Oh, really? Yeah, I've been married mm -hmm. 20 years. She was my high school girlfriend. Mm -hmm. we, for oh, a long okay. time. we got married at 23. She was 20. She was 22, I was 23. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So from high school, y'all knew each other? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. How do you guys maintain such a long-term relationship with one woman? How do you, how do, you do that? 
I don't know. Uh, I kind of I was a, little, a bit of a whore before I met my wife, so I got that kind of out of my yeah. system. You know, I think you got to get that out of your system. Yeah, you got to keep it, keep things new. Just don't do the same shit over and over. You know. Yeah. Especially in the bedroom, you can't just be, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and bust me some nuts. <laughs> no, you gotta you gotta. Well, women women are emotional pincushions. Right. They love making out. They love foreplay. You got to do all of that. And the stuff you did before you even got in the bedroom matters too. If her life's fucked up and you're not taking care of her, yeah, right. Her car's breaking down. It's got That's the, the check engine light it on. Is. You don't I do agree. stuff around. You don't make her feel safe. You don't make her feel appreciated. She's not going to be sexually attracted to you at all. Yeah, women, yeah. man. When well, you're men, young, it's more physical. Women, yeah. it's all emotions. Yeah. Maybe when the young woman was younger and it was like she was a teenager, that would have worked. But as they get older, it's it's totally not like that. Yeah. I. Imagine, but it's not always the case because you look at guys like Tom Brady or you know some of these like high profile athletes and celebrities, mm -hmm. and their wives get bored of them. So I, you know, I I tend to think that as a high status man, meaning mm -hmm. other women would love to fuck me, yeah. right, right. it kind of keeps your wife excited just it knowing does. that. You know, it does. You're it's absolutely, an attraction. You're you absolutely are. right. Yeah, you are. Ab you are one hundred percent right. Women are very sexually attracted to a very successful to man. status, right? To status, status. Like my, I could see my wife's attraction for me as yeah. I grew. Uh, my, um, um, my business or my status has grown. I yeah. can see how she approaches me. Yeah. differently. It's yeah. just, just natural. It's just, it's di there's a difference between the sexes. For men, it's physical. For women, it's more than just physical. Yeah. It's status. Yeah. Uh, can you provide for me? How do you treat me? I take care of me. Yeah. Yeah. Which is make me what? treat do you make me feel like a great woman? Just all of that matters. Yeah. yeah. Simple for guys. We just dudes. Just wanna we we're toxic. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. Simple, simple man. <laughs> we're fucking toxic. Yeah. I'll take that. Yeah. yeah. Right. That word is is as a weaponized it's just so many terms that the left uses. Yeah. They just weaponize words. No, I, I wear this yeah. shit with a badge of honor. I'm yeah. a toxic man. I've yeah. I'm not a feminine, progressive voting dude. Yeah, I'm without toxic dude. men, you won't have a society. Right. Yeah. 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 And women prefer yeah, a they man do. that's toxic, mm -hmm. no yeah. matter what they say. Yeah, mm -hmm. they might be progressive. They might be liberal. They might be getting with a dude that wears mascara. Or 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 some some rouge or they wearing skitty jeans, but when they want to get fucked, yeah, they find them a toxic. The man. only women that don't like toxic men is lesbian women, right? Yeah, because that's the only ones. Yeah, and even them, they like toxic feminine women. Yeah, it tries to be masculine, right? Yeah. Which doesn't butch. make any freaking sense. The butch kind of woman, you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, but it's toxic when a man. So it's all bullshit. Yeah. Because when you look at this, there's always a butch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I thought you wanted to be with a woman. If I'm a lesbian, uh, I don't want to be a woman, I'm going to get me a hot chick. Yeah, I'm right. not going to Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> what the hell are you thinking? <laughs> right. Yeah, you must You're a lesbian. Go get you a, a hot chick. Go get you Beyonce or Rihanna or something. <laughs> right. Why are you getting with Rosie O'Donnell? <laughs> Just get a guy. A she... dickless dude with a chick. <laughs> right. Wearing a baseball cap and with a peach fuzz on her lip. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, crazy, crazy world, and that's really man. celebrated too. It's yeah. like uh, yeah. virtue. You virtue signaling mm -hmm. by living that lifestyle. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if you don't, a lot of people, like you said, I agree with you. A lot of people doing it just because they want to show everybody how woke they are. Right. That's why you see all these celebrities. Oh, look, my kids. She goes. She goes by they them pronouns. Now. Right. She's not a man of. They're just showing how woke they are. Yeah, you look so, at Madonna, uh, Charlize Theron. Mm -hmm. They adopted black boys right. in Africa. Right. And now both of them are living their lives as women. Yeah. What about just, that basketball just, player? What's his name? Wayne Dwayne, Wade. Dwayne Wade. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it. Your son's gay, but he yeah. was dating another uh, a girl who's living her life as a boy. Yeah. And he's living his life as a, a girl. That's still straight sex. Yeah. Yeah. It's kinky as shit what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. But I always thought like a lot of transgenders were gay. A lot of them are not even gay. Right. Yeah. They I, just been indoctrinated with this bullshit that you can choose your own gender. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I didn't understand. I thought they were gay. Like uh my um my um babysitter for my kids, she was gay. Back in Virginia. Back in Virginia, but she she sat us down, she said she was gonna start trans trans you know transforming you know yep. to a guy so and i was like that's the first time i came across anything like this you know 
I noticed she would always look at E Entertainment and look at all these drag shows on TV in my house. But I didn't care, <laughs> you know? So, but because my kid loved her to death and she was she was good people. I had a straight babysitter and my son couldn't stand her black yeah. ass. So we finally found a babysitter that he liked. So she sat us down and said she was going to try to become a man. She said her voice is going to change. She's going to start taking testosterone. Which I looked at my wife, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, you know, it's first time dealing with this. I didn't know what to expect. I don't know how my son's going to react. But, um, and then I found out her boyfriend wanted to be a girl. So I was like, hmm. Still kinky. Sex. Yeah. yeah. Right. You're not even gay. You're just kinky as shit. Right. So, but well, I don't trendy. think she ended up going through it because after a while, yeah, trendy. Yeah. I don't, she didn't. End up falling through. I noticed a voice change, but she didn't grow. Any, I think she changed her mind. Yeah. You know, same thing yeah. with that high jumper, the de- de- decathlete. What was his name? Um, Bruce Jenner. Bruce Jenner. He's not gay. Yeah, he's he's a lesbian now. So he likes. He still he, He's a women. woman. Yeah, yeah he's. But he likes, but, yeah, but he likes women. women. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's bullshit, right? Right. <laughs> right. I mean, it's I, hyper intellectual bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> hyper, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hyper intellectual. I was like, this dude's not even gay. So, <laughs> I thought he wanted to be a woman so a dude could do him. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a I'm a conspiracy theorist. So I just happen to think that a lot of times these celebrities are either compromised or bought off in order to do some of this wild shit. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of them are. Yeah. I think a lot of them are. Right. I think Bruce is just, he always wanted to be um Yeah, so, some of his stuff exists. Yeah. I'm not denying that transgender exists, but um, a lot of these kids that this uh, being, you know, just being pushed on at a young age, right. yeah, 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 I yeah, don't yeah. think that's right at all. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-mm. Like yeah. Uh, Dwayne Wade's son, I mean. He's a teenager though, though, right? Yeah, he should wait. I don't know if he's cutting off body parts or anything like that, but right. something that drastic and that. That yeah. series should be wait till you're at least 18, at the very least. I would say even older than that, say 21, before you start removing body parts. Because right. when I was 18, 19, I was a moron. Right. You know? And they're letting like six, seven year, year old kids take in like uh, puberty blockers and stuff like right. that. Hysterectomies for girls. Yeah, that's just before sick. Before they get puberty. It's yeah. crazy. Unfortunately, these kids, I mean, they're, I think they're being sacrificed. But right. eventually, they're going to grow up. And they're going to be able to tell their story. And I know 99% of them is going to be talking trash about their parents. Right. So, And a lot of it is already happening. Yeah. And there's the, I think the suicide rate with these children that have the mm-hmm. sex change is uh, really high. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Suicide rates among transgenders is high to begin with. And they, they say them going through the surgery is supposed to alleviate that. Mm-hmm. But it's not. Right. Yeah. It's create more confusion. It's Yeah. Yeah. You just... You know, I was watch. I watch this one transgender. She's a conservative. She's Republican. Her name is Blair White. Mm-hmm. She uh she does videos with other transgenders who transition, and she shares their story on you know the ups and the downs and that and and they express to them this is not an easy decision to make. It more often than not, more often than not, it's going to become a wrong decision over time. You're going to regret these things. Right. So. I mean, a lot of these kids are making these huge decisions. They're taking these decisions very lightly, and it's going to be could be astronomically horrible for them as they grow up. Because once you remove a body part, like your breast, your penis, you can't put that stuff back on. You can put that breast back in there. You put yeah, you get a <laughs> you can get some better tits, but you can't yeah. get a better cock. And a lot yeah. of damage with the hormones is irreversible yeah. too. Irreversible. Putting those uh, female hormones in a man's body, mm-hmm. it's cancerous. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I recently went on TRT because of my age. And my, my T was in the tubes, and he said, hey, man, your estrogen is way high. Right. That's cancerous in your body. You, you are susceptible to uh, colon cancer. Right. Uh, prostate cancer. Prostate cancer. Yeah. So I, he put me on a, um, a testosterone replacement therapy, and he put uh, anti-estrogen in uh, and my estrogen's down at a nice, healthy level. And now my T is, is at a nice, healthy level, like around 850. So you take estrogen blockers, too? Yeah, you have to if you're taking testosterone. Yeah, if because well, some people um, what do you call it? Um, amortize what? The, um, the amortize. Amort, yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Some some sometimes some in some men the the T is more likely to convert to estrogen. So okay. some you have to take some it. men don't have to take it. Yeah, but we have to take it because yeah. uh, our estrogen started going up. Yeah, that's an age thing. Mm-hmm. That's an age. Or do thing. you think maybe it's a it's an environment thing too? 
could, yeah, could like, be look, all of that. We drink it out of these plastic bottles, mm-hmm. have some xenoestrogens, yeah. mm-hmm. phytoestrogens in mm-hmm. the food that we eat. Yeah, it's, it, it's a lot good. of the air fresheners and stuff. Even right. the chemicals in the clothing that we wear, mm-hmm. right, right, right. Yeah. have been known to spike. Uh, mm-hmm. um, yeah, because it's just all absorbed estrogen. through your skin. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a, a lot to do with it. Because a lot of these are these foods we should eat unless they were organic. Did you guys say this last <laughs> night? I think one of you guys said that last night about the food that turns the the insect gay. Was it, did you, did you <laughs> it might have been an opening act. Yeah, it might have been Chris. Okay, but I was doing a lot of gay jokes last <laughs> night. <laughs> I had a lot of my I was going there for a minute. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was my hardest hit last some <laughs> What did you say though? Uh the good kind. The, oh yeah. The, uh, good, good gay. Yeah, good gay. Yeah, yeah, good gay. <laughs> I think that, they're so fascinating though. I follow a couple gay conservatives mm-hmm. and they make me laugh because they, yeah. they, they understand something. Mm-hmm. It's like, but well, you just like to take it in the ass, but yeah, yeah, yeah you're on the like same page. Just, just like, like us, right. but you just take it in the ass. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like us. Yeah. <laughs> who do you guys follow? Uh, who do you like to follow on like YouTube or social media? Is anybody that you guys uh, are into? Um, I look at quite a few conservatives. I look at Candace. I look at um, Stephen Crowder. Stephen Crowder. Um, Brandon Tatum. Um, ABL. Um, yeah. What's another one? Um, uh, was, Tim Pool. Tim Pool. Yes. Um, uh, uh, ben Shapiro. A lot of them. Uh, Blair White. Um, she's transgender and she's uh, conservative. Um, the guy that did the. Um, Damn, boy, how am I forgetting his name? I watch him all the time. Yeah, I know you. I am a woman. He did the documentary. I Walsh, am a woman. Walsh. Yeah, Walsh. I don't know why I keep forgetting his fucking name. <laughs> yeah, but I watch Walsh. him all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that's a, I have. I a watch lot of Mark people. Levin. Yeah, I listen Mark, to his radio show. Yeah, I, read I look at a lot of Fox News, Tucker Carlson, Hannity. Yeah. Uh, I consume it all. Yeah. You and, I, and I still have time to look at stuff like the Young Turks. I still watch them. Yeah. I've been following. I've been subscribed to them for. Over twelve years. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Dore, who is um, he's, he's actually progressive. He's actually the only progressive I, I really. Is. Yeah, Jimmy Dore. Jimmy I Dore. like him, but he, he's uh, he's sane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he's common sense. You don't get a lot of that on um, with progressive, progressive side. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy Dore is a good watch. You uh, guys do the um, how many channels do you have? Uh, um, we got conservative twins. Uh, we just started a new channel called Patriot Twins. That's right. Well, we're just going to do more um, current events, but, you know, my politics is going to bleed in a little, but not so much. Current events outside of politics, meaning yeah. like Hollywood stuff or mm-hmm. just Yeah, but things. my politics more than likely is going to, you know, seep in a little. <laughs> um, we got, um, you know, the fitness channel. We've rebranded that as, what, Harsh Twins? Yeah. yeah. So no, no, there's no longer Twin Muscle. Yeah, I mm-hmm. just changed the name of it. Harsh, harsh Twins. twins. Yeah. And then we have, you know, the relationship channel, Ask Harsh Twins. Yeah. And you guys are still uploading actively on those? On the mm-hmm. two channels, yeah. more more active on Patriot, Conservative Twins, Harsh Twins than than I. Uh, we do ask Harsh Twins, but uh, it's not as you know. We need to get back um, doing more videos regularly on that channel too. The um the Conservative channel, you guys do like a lot of news stories. So of course mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. probably watching mm-hmm. the weird news as mm-hmm. well, not just conservative stuff. How much research goes into the uh, into the shows that you guys do or the um the YouTube video? Uh, about 30 minutes per topic. Mm-hmm. What do you mm-hmm. do? You just go and look for like h- headlines? Yeah, I can see mm-hmm. what's going through my best feed on Instagram. <laughs> Instagram, your Instagram feed. If you find a lot of conservatives, right. that's the best place to go. Yeah, yeah, that's where I get most of my news. Yeah, I go look Memes. at other channels, see, what's, uh, what, see they're what they're talking, talking about. about. Because they've done a lot of research themselves, yeah. which saves me a lot of time because I don't have a lot of time. Right. Yeah. Um, That's pretty much how I come up with topics. And, um, and then we'll just go over you know our main points we want to go over and then we just turn the camera on and just mm-hmm. go and a lot of times when we're doing a video stuff other stuff comes up too that yeah. pops up in your mind while you're giving while you're your talking. opinions you guys mm-hmm. freestyle yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah i would like to do like get a teleprompter and have all that stuff sketched out but it's i totally don't have time for that so i just speak it from the heart yeah. do you find that if you have a plan that you still end up having to improv Mm-hmm. 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 Right. I find mm-hmm. that my I create my best content when I'm just flying off the handle. Yep. Yeah. If yep. I plan too much, it's yeah. You're just going to ruin it. Yeah. You exactly. just want to have some you talking overthink points. It. You yeah. overthink it. Some just, people are good at overthinking stuff, yeah. but I'm not. Yeah. I'm more off the 
off the cuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's great to write down some some things you want to say so you won't forget. Mm-hmm. But then once you add some things to say, something automatically just pops in yeah. your head and you mm-hmm. just. So. But it's good to have a trigger or prompt. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you guys are using uh, news mm-hmm. and current mm-hmm. events. Mm-hmm. I just take questions. Yeah, that, yeah. you do ask Hodge twins. Yeah, like that. Those, those are hilarious. Yeah, those yeah. are crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I used to lay in my hammock and like my kids, my family would be around, uh-huh. and they just hear me cracking up because I lay in there and cover myself up. That's just yeah, my right. cocoon. Right. So yeah, I'm right. chilling. They know I lay, dad's in the hammock and I'm right. watching videos or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. and it was you guys. Yeah. Right, like right. there was a season there when I was just watching you guys. Like, I get in my hammock, I just watch you guys over and over again. And my right, guys right. Would just hear me laughing. <laughs> like, are you listening <laughs> to those twins Hodge again? Twins? Yeah, yes, yeah, as yeah. Hodge twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Answering questions is, is a lot of. Fun. I might want to diversify, but answering mm-hmm. questions is is so fun mm-hmm. because yeah. it's like somebody. It's like mm-hmm. baseball, right? Like somebody's throwing you something. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, cool. I'm gonna hit it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's out of the park. Yeah. Sometimes it's not. Right, right. Yeah, I guarantee you. You start doing a lot of. Um, uh, conservative uh, based videos, you're gonna start getting all kinds of questions. All yeah. kinds of questions. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's pretty gonna cool. fuel it. Yeah. And it don't have to be right. Yeah. yeah. They just want your opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are responsible. I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah. One of the things that you guys were famous for on uh your on the muscle channel was do whatever the fuck you wanna do. Yeah. Which yeah. basically means yeah. I'm just giving you advice. Yeah. I'm yeah. just telling you my opinion. Yeah. Because for a moment there, people was feeding on YouTube about what's best, what's right. what's not best. I'm like, man, at the end of the day, it's up to you because you know your body better than I do. It's, right. more, it's more than one way to peel a damn potato, man. Yeah. 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 So we own. started saying that because yeah. some people didn't like the advice. Right. So it's like, fuck it. That was helpful. You guys have been helpful to me in a lot yeah. of ways. And that was one of the things that mm-hmm. gave me uh, freedom to say some things because mm-hmm. I realized, look, I don't have to be right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, right. It's just really, I'm not even trying to be right. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to be entertaining. Yeah. I just want you to listen to it and get, get, glean some insight or make you think in, in a different you. way or motivate you. Or just, yeah. I'm trying to do something, but I am not trying to be right. Because if you live in your yeah. life trying to be right, you're always going to be wrong. Yeah. Right? I just like to share things that, you know, just, just work for me and us, you know, and what's. What's, what's worked for us in our lifestyle. So I try to apply some anecdotal, you know, uh, thinking along with my, my advice whenever we did fitness or relationships. Mm-hmm. So, cause a lot of these things you learn through trial and error anyway. Right. Yeah. And then you could change your mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're allowed to change your mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you guys are uh, going to start doing fitness videos again? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to create a TikTok and uh, I was going to create another uh, YouTube channel cause I wanted to go back into that. Cause it, it was just fun, you know. Mm-hmm. It was just like really fun making the making the videos. You guys have a, a, a lot of fun doing that. Yeah, that shit don't even. Well, feel like we uh, took a long break from it. That did shit you? was we, we haven't really did fitness in like years. Oh, on the fitness channel, yeah. That yeah. shit burnt me out. Yeah, yeah. Because the same fucking questions over and over and over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got burned out on that shit. Me too. Like I look at some of the fitness guys, they're still fucking doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude. Answer the same questions that we asked. I think like, I saw yeah. a Scooby video the other day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still got his shirt off. <laughs> is, he, is he still on YouTube? I just saw a Scooby video yeah, the other shit. day. Yeah. It popped up on my feed and I was like, this is fascinating. <laughs> right. <laughs> this guy is still here. Yeah, he came out of the closet about three years back with his boyfriend and all that. That's right. It was funny when he did that. I said, I already knew. <laughs> it's, it's pretty evident. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny when people come out of the closet like, you're not coming. Everybody know you're gay, dude. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 My brother's gay. Oh, yeah? Oh, really? My younger brother's gay. But he was always gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was gay. For, yeah. As a kid, he wanted to play with dolls. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. what? Me and my other brothers would play Transformers or, right, or, right. or G.I. Joe's. Yeah. He was interested in, in dolls. So, yeah. yeah. It's like right. we kind of can tell. Somebody calls it a, a gay dar. It's like, yeah. yeah, everybody got a gay dar. I can yeah. tell this. Yeah. My, my oldest Flying daughter, I hadn't been in a majority of our life because, you know, we went separate ways with her mom and she mm-hmm. moved. It's just too far. And at the time, economically, I couldn't, I could barely support paying the child support payments. So, and, and about over the last year, we kind of retouched and, and I was talking to her, and uh, and uh, I said, hey, you have a boyfriend? She's like, no, I don't have a boyfriend. I said, who you live with? She said, well, I live with my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I said, well, you have a girlfriend? Oh, okay. And I just left it at that. And I was like, yeah, she's probably gay. So I hit up, and I said, so um, you're not in a relationship with anybody right now? She's like, no, no, no. I was like, you sure? <laughs> yeah. I said, you're gay, right? Then she's like, 
She froze. I said, it's okay. It's okay if you're gay. I said that. She said, she put her head down. And she like, yeah, I can see her breathing again, you know. But everybody, these people that come out of class, everybody know you're gay. Right. Yeah. You're not fooling nobody. Yeah. You know. Right. Do you guys uh, watch anybody on YouTube for fitness? Anybody lifting or, or I don't even look at fitness videos yeah. no more. Yeah. I was I'm, so I'm so preoccupied with uh, politics. Politics, because yeah. politics, man, it's some. It, you it, you could easily sit down and talk about three, four, five topics a day. Yeah, it's just some always to talk about in politics. Fitness, it was just you know it's the same shit over and over. It's the right. same thing. Right. There's a there's a um, there's people out there that looks for it. You know. New people a day. Usually new shape. people. Yeah, mm-hmm. usually new people, yeah. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. once you get all the the foundation, mm-hmm. then you're done. And then it's a matter of, okay, what are you going to do with that? Mm-hmm. And then you experiment and figure it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what's funny? Because before I got into fitness, I used to thought it was so hard. What do I do? All it is is compound movements and your macros, 44, yeah. 20. That's all it is. <laughs> That's all it is. It's actually really simple. Yeah. It's the most simplest <laughs> it, shit. It, consist- it is. And be consistent. But these guys hyper-intellectualize. Yeah. Know? They yeah. turn it into some massive, mind-blowing <laughs> right. mind map Tipping. that you got to follow. Yeah. I remember the, the science guys was attacking us. Yes. Saying we was anti-science. I'm like, look. Yeah, me too. Chicken breast, broccoli, uh, sweet potatoes, green beans, collard greens, um, Slow digesting carbs, oatmeal. This shit's work has been in the magazines. I'm not anti-science. I just didn't have the science knowledge to back up what I was saying. I was just yeah. sharing with you what I was doing. Bro science. Yeah. yeah. They call it bro science, but it was actually science because of the foods you were eating. Right. I just wasn't sharing the science. Right. So these people were attacking us saying it was bro science. No, it's not. And which the only reason why they was attacking us because they seen our numbers all going up. And yeah. that's the only it was just jealousy. It was just, it was just pure jealousy. It took yeah. me a little while to figure that out, too. Yeah, it was yeah. just jealousy. I spiked real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I didn't know how to handle it. Yeah. I, I hit you up one time too. I was like, yeah. well, "What do I? How do you guys handle this?" Yeah. Was I jealousy. wasn't prepared for it, but then I realized afterwards, I was like, oh, "Okay, they want to take down the top dog because yep. mm-hmm. envy, and yeah. you know, all kinds of That's stuff." That's all it yeah. was. That's all it was. It wasn't it had nothing to do with science. It was just envy. YouTube changed a lot since the time we came up. We're like pioneers. Yeah, I, I made my first video in two thousand and uh, ten. Yeah, well, I remember, nine, 2009. I remember, yeah, yeah, I remember back in the day you could post a video and you could share that video with yeah. people. Mm-hmm. Or you could do a response video to other people's videos right. and your yeah. videos will automatically show up. It was great. Yeah, you could. I could take your video and share it on my profile. Yeah. yeah. It was and it awesome. would, you would get gang attracted. If I want to promote a channel or share somebody's video that I, uh, you know, that resonates with me, I would share it and it would get tons of followers. Yeah, tons people of would likes. share me and I would get tons of followers. It was great. But now YouTube decides who they're going to put out there. Right. That's yeah. why I also, like Facebook, I don't know how it was for you guys, but a lot of my YouTube growth came from reposting on Facebook. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Facebook would show the videos back then. Right. You yeah. can't copy and paste the video into Yeah, yeah they Facebook won't they won't put it out there. You gotta actually upload it to that platform because mm-hmm. Facebook they, and, and YouTube found out say, hey, look, I'm not pushing you to another platform. Yeah. All videos just pushing videos, all videos just pushing other people off my platform, yeah. they uh they lower the reach on those videos mm-hmm. because they want you to stay on that platform. They want to make money off their ads. Mm-hmm. If you if you are a big channel, I, I found this out recently. A lot of my retention was going down because I was too busy pushing people to other platforms. Like, hey, follow my Instagram, follow my uh, Facebook, go buy my T-shirts. YouTube's algorithm does not like that. Really? Mm-mm. It's okay to promote your merchandise, but you putting links in there and and even tell- in the description, like, I mean, it's fine. It's just so long as you're when you talk about your merchandise, you're not talking about it for a minute. Yeah, people go because people gonna it. start skipping and it lowers oh. your retention. Yeah. I used to have this long ad at the end of my video after my video is like two minutes it's like nobody's looking at that they've right, seen they it a million times yeah so we was hurting our retention yeah youtube pushes videos that has high uh retention throughout the video and it's not pushing people off that platform and if your video is performing so well that after you watch one video to go watch another your video another video oh, okay these people the algorithm will say you know what put this guy's videos out there people like their videos mm. if you put out videos and you got a link in the focus of your videos they go buy my shirt you know, yeah, it puts you off the platform. You guys treat YouTube like a business. Yeah, yeah you have to. I uh, have to. That's you my only income is YouTube. Uh, social media is my lifeline. So yeah, yeah. it is. It's that's my job. 
That's so another thing that them. you put me on to. So when I came out the gates, I was selling ebooks. I still do. Mm-hmm. Workout plans. That's mm-hmm. just what I understood. Mm-hmm. I was an info marketer, so I'm making mm-hmm. ebook workouts and mm-hmm. video courses. I had like DVD of the month for right. football workouts and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Right. Um, and then I got involved with full screen. I think it was. Right. Yeah, we used to be yeah. with them full screen. And then so they, mm-hmm. I guess you could, we linked up as a result. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't, I wasn't monetizing ads before that. I wasn't yeah. monetizing my videos. I didn't realize. Well, I didn't I realize that, yeah. it was a it was a business. Yeah, I remember and I it, said, "Dude, you're throwing away a lot of money, and I put ads on your videos." <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He said, "Just turn it on." He said, "Just trust me. Just turn it on." I was yeah. like, yeah. "All right." Yeah. That first month was like yeah. eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. Then it was like twenty five thousand. That's when you went viral because YouTube is only going to put out a video if it's monetized. Yeah. So you had these <laughs> great videos, giving this great advice, had this great retention on it. You wasn't monetizing. As soon as you put those ads on there, YouTube up. knows it, and that's why you blew up like that. Yeah, because your videos already mm-hmm. showed that they resonated. You used to audience. be you used to be focusing on your business, which is uh, right. your ebook, which is fine. It's nothing wrong with that. But your primary focus for YouTube to be successful on YouTube, and eventually, which which in turn is going to make your ebook successful, is the information you got to always continue to nurture your audience because mm-hmm. they're going to appreciate you. What you're doing? You giving away all this free advice? Hell yeah, I'm gonna go buy his ebook. Right, like the stuff for um, what we do in politics. Oh man, these guys are black and they're conservative. They're putting their name out there. You damn right, I'm gonna support these guys. I'm gonna go buy that shirt. Yeah. That's how people that follow you can support you. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. But you always got to remember. And I had to, we had to get back to the basics with our channel because I saw my numbers going down. Yeah, it's like I need to get back to what what people love me for is which is putting out that message I put out. Mm-hmm. They can always support me by coming to my comedy show or buying a shirt from me, you know? That's right. So you can't never forget that. Always so gotta... what does your business model look like? You have social media, that's where mm-hmm. you're reaching people. Mm-hmm. And then you guys have your shows mm-hmm. and you have merch. Mm-hmm. Is it... Then you have subscriptions. Mm-hmm. I got some um, yeah. uh, subscription models. The, on. the majority of money we uh, we earn is through uh, merchandise and our comedy shows. The ads are okay on YouTube, but being conservative, it's my down. ads are not the best. Yeah, yeah, I don't earn much money from mm-hmm. ads, so it went all, down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all the money I make majority is from uh, shows uh, and merchandise. And I don't think it went down for everybody. Really. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah. You don't think it's because there's so many new people that like this ad spend is spread out? I have no idea. That was my hypothesis. No, there's people on YouTube and, I, and they share their revenue. There's people making like hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. Yeah. They get premium wow. ads. They yeah. get like, you know how you go to an ad and you can't click off of it? Right. That's premium ads. All my ads I get, you can click off it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> These channels, there's, uh, just, they're making so much money. So much money. You can't even click off that. You have to watch that. You have that. to watch the ad. Yeah. Is it because they the message that these people are yep. pushing it's, is in alignment with big of tech? Course. Of yep. course. Of yeah. course. Exactly. Of course. Yeah. It's there. It's, it's, if, you're, if you're like a, a, like Colin Noir, he's a Second Amendment advocate. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He's not going to have premium. If ads at all on right. this video because he, his, his message goes against Social media's agenda. Liberals hate guns. They're not going to put premium ads on these videos. Mm-hmm. You know, we're mm-hmm. making peanuts compared to some people that, yeah, that message aligned with big tech and what they're pushing. So yeah. right, they premium ads. It's mm-hmm. like they incentivize those people to keep doing what they're doing, and they're trying to de incentivize us what we're doing. Yeah. What do you guys think about Jordan Peterson? I think he's great. Yeah, he's like he's uh, amazing. Yeah. We call him Mega Mind. He's real smart. Yeah, he's yeah, real he's, smart. Uh, he's like a, fa- a father figure for a lot of men. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He did an incredible mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. Um, your travel schedule is uh, is pretty busy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you guys doing shows all year round or just uh, for uh, Just for the rest of this year. Next yeah. year, I'm going to calm down. I'm going to still do shows, but I'm not going to be doing what I'm doing now. This is like yeah, insane. I, I wanted to focus. Like this year was going to kill it with the shows. And yeah. uh, next year I was just going to focus on YouTube. Instagram is just putting out a great message. Just continue to build our brand and what we stand for. Mm-hmm. We're still going to do the shows, but it's going to yeah. be on the back burner. You right. Know? I want to focus on the content mm-hmm. because that content is why I'm doing shows in the first right. place. Without that content, I don't have comedy shows. I don't have T-shirts. So I want to focus on the message of conservatism for black men and for all men in general. Yeah. You know, so 
that's our focus next year. It's going to be a, a primary focus is get out what, the content. What else is on the horizon for you guys? Like, what's next, or what? Your, what are your goals for the next couple of years? Um, you know what? Just to continue to do. I mean, I'm not looking too far ahead. I I I might run for Congress. I might run for the Senate. I don't know. Um, um, down the road, but yeah. right now I'm just really. You're yeah. honestly thinking about mm-hmm. getting involved in politics. That's yeah. amazing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You ever seen that person that you know that's very f- successful and you never thought they would go as far as they went? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You you run into people like that, right? It's like, wow, he did that, he did that. It's not that that person who's doing that is any more talented than you are. It's right. just that he went for it. Right. It's kind of like that guy that goes for that hot chick. Yeah. Man, she's hot. I'm not going to go for that. You look at the putts she's with. <laughs> That's what life's all about. You got to go for it. Go yeah, for take it. chances. Sometimes you're gonna you're gonna get rejected, but more often than not, if you if you, if you go for it and you just three out of ten, you're still successful. Yeah, it's you're like, still batting three hundred. Yeah, it's like um, you go up to three tens. A lot of people and you get turned down. Yeah, and you get three up. Shit. Yeah, yeah. it's like you're people still an all star. It's right? like people oppress themselves that they don't even realize it. They're what? Actually, people actually oppress themselves oh. and they don't even realize it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you just, you put your own stuff in a box and you don't continue to, people become complacent and they don't keep pushing themselves. Yeah. People are their own worst enemy, man. Yeah. Not a white supremacist, not a Democrat, not a Republican. Right. Yeah. You, your own worst enemy. You went up here, which was far, but you could have went to the fucking moon. Yeah. yeah, it's because you set limits on yourself. So yeah. I'm not gonna rest of my life. I have on this planet. I'm gonna always continue to not become complacent and to push myself. Yeah, yeah. You always got to reinvent yourself too, even when it feels uncomfortable. Because yeah, it's gonna better. Yeah, you if you're putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, then you're doing a good thing. Because when yeah. I first started talking politics, I used to hate talking about politics, even though I was a conservative and a comedian. But it's hard being talking about conservatism and making it funny. Right. But over time, I got better at it. I got better at it, and I kept pushing. And look where I'm at today, more successful than I've ever been, even when I was popping in fitness, you know. Mm-hmm. So you always got to reinvent yourself. Mm-hmm. You, you can't come become complacent. You always got to try new things, even if those new things feel so uncomfortable. That means when you're doing something uncomfortable, you, that something's telling you you're in the right direction. If you're sitting back being comfortable and you want to take things easy, then you're slowly regressing. You're slowly pushing yourself out of, the, out of being successful. You, know? you guys are kind of like pioneers in this too, right? Like there mm-hmm. aren't too many black conservative comedians. Yeah, yeah, unicorns. Yeah. You starting to see a lot of them now on YouTube. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of black conservatives on YouTube yeah. now. They're doing reaction videos. They're slowly putting themselves out there. They're uh, not saying they're conservative, but I know they're conservative. But the things yeah. they're talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that the perspective that they're given. Yeah. 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 The yeah. pendulum's swinging. Yeah, it is. It yeah. has to come back. There's only so much chaos before order. People are crying for order. Yeah. And things just to be sane and make sense once again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To a certain degree, it helps Democrats chaos because they divide everybody. Right. That's how they win. But you can't take chaos but so far but until everybody recognizes what you're doing. Right. And they're playing their hands really hard right now. Yeah. They're really crazy now. Yeah. They're very yeah. obvious. Yeah. Divide and conquer has always been that motto. But now they're starting to look crazy. Uh-huh. Even uh, um, black churches are starting to wake up to that transgender movement. Nobody has anything against people who actually suffer from transgenderism. Right. But they're pushing that shit on kids. You you got them Having drag shows. Right. Drag shows. That's that's not appropriate for kids. Yeah. But why don't you help these people instead of enabling them and celebrating them? That's right. A, that's the mm-hmm. kind of thing that I wonder about also, too. It's like, right. if you really have compassion... Mm-hmm. Why don't you try to help that guy? Like mm-hmm. you know, right. his, his things aren't going to work out so well for him in his life. Yeah, if he continues to live that way. But you know, they mm-hmm. use Bruce Jenner and people like that to say, you know, you could be a celebrity, right? By following this, but really, I think a lot of them think that they're living their lives better as a transgender. Yeah. I mean, I, I I've never walked in their shoes. I'm yeah. all for it. Just do it. I just don't like you involving kids. Right. I don't like what your the your rights is a, a stepping on my rights. Uh, like the whole right. transgender movie competing against women that's bullshit right mm-hmm. drag shows that's bullshit you just you're trying to validate your lifestyle and yourself through other people like kids through com- getting the, the ability to compete against women it, it's it's just wrong it's just it's crazy too because you see these uh these people being thrown in in the preschools and libraries i'm like why are you seeking valid if you're so happy with your life why are you seeking validation from right. a small child 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, diabolical disorientation. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a weird time we live in. I appreciate you guys taking some time to meet me today. Yeah, yeah thank I you. I really do. I, long I'm overdue. So excited. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have been begging for this for a long time. Long yeah. overdue. I don't know if they still remember. It's, yeah. it's like actually too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey, it's, it's a new, we're starting a new... Uh, a yeah. new direction. A lot of people are going to be pissed off because we're conservative. They're going to get pissed off if, right. if you're leaning right. But it's okay, though. They're just happy, unhappy with that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. That's all that is. There's a lot of people that are ashamed of us. Yeah. They say, because they'll curse me out, too. Mm-hmm. And they'll say, he did just like the Hodge twins. Yeah. They went the wrong route. Rise yeah. and fall. There was one kid, he made a right. documentary about me, called it The Rise and Fall. Rise and fall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so stupid. You never fail. Right. Yeah. You know? Um, it's just stupid, man. Yeah. So maybe there'll be more opportunity. I want to do invite you guys to my ranch to go lift stones. But I know you probably got bad backs. Yeah, I, I can lift back. a stone, but I'm going to be in a wheelchair. <laughs> so much, you got a wheelchair now. Snap your shit up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Send me the snap That's crazy. City, you, got a, you said it was, what, 30 acres, you said? 42. 42, 42. wow. Mm-hmm. That's amazing, man. Yeah, I just didn't It don't be sound around. like you falling to me. Huh, no. 40 acre ranch? It's yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, my parents are moving in. I've got a house in the back. Oh, okay. A little uh, barn. So my parents my are wife moving. wants a ranch. Yeah. yeah. Well, you you think about going to Texas, right? Either um, we're thinking about moving to either Florida or Texas. Where Those in Florida are you thinking? I don't know. We just got, got to think about yeah, that. Yeah. Florida or Texas. So. Well, definitely if you Orlando guys are back is nice. They, they love Orlando. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll we'll have to do this again. If especially if you guys are in Florida and you're still traveling, mm-hmm. man. Like I said, like you said, it's long overdue. Yeah, yeah. And this has been amazing, bro. Well, oh, thank you, man. So, where can people find you guys and get involved with what you're doing? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Hodge Twins. You uh, can follow us on YouTube at Conservative Twins and Patriot Twins. You can follow us on Twitter at Hodge Twins and Facebook the Hodge Twins. I wouldn't push them to Facebook though. It's still a platform until he kick us off. <laughs> but that's how you can find us. Yeah. That's right. Everywhere. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.